Start episode ten. I have another guest. We're gonna bring in. Uh, it's right. Ten men. This has been going fast. We've been having a oh, time. So if you watch the Star Wars Watchathon and we're up at two in the morning, two a.m. somewhere around there, you may have seen our last guest. Uh, uh, you know our great voice actress. You know where is Ash? Uh oh, come on. You know where as big baby bagel bites. Here she is, Sarah Nato Chenny. Hello, Sarah, hello, Sarah. Sarah, hello. welcome like. back. <laughs> How are you? Good. Do you have HBO Max? Can we start this episode? I have we'll HBO Go. I'm okay. ready to go. That works. Then you should okay. be able, if you download HBO Max, you should be able to get it for free. <laughs> oh, yeah? don't, don't worry about that. Yes. Sure, don't. Yeah. It, it, it's such a complicated service. <laughs> I know. Right. It's really not. It's really easy. Okay. Uh, Ready? Sure I can get it. Okay. Don't, don't one, it, George. Okay. One, two, Three. There we go. I'm not, I'm not saying you need it for now. I'm just saying for when you're done today, if you want to get yeah. HBO Max, there's a lot of things you can watch. I on know HBO the Looney Max. Tunes. The Looney Tunes. I, I'm Looney. To you that. can watch. You can watch Gimme Shelter, uh, which was yeah. the first film I ever worked on, the Rolling Stones documentary. You can watch The Land Before oh. Time, which is an animated movie that I produced with my buddy Steve. Oh. You know, there there oh. are so many movies for Lucas fans. Yeah. Um, now, Sarah, you of course are famous for being the voice of uh, Bane so Beaked, Bane so Baked, rather. <laughs> Bane so Bucket. Right. Bane so Bucket. And uh, Little Baby Bagel Bites, mm. many yeah. others, many other important characters in the really? course Lucas talk show yeah. canon. Now, I don't know if you know this, but in the weeks since we last saw you, we've been yeah. doing this artless stream, and we've started developing a new animated series of our own. It's a spin off and a prequel to the live hit comedy Arliss called Baby Arliss. Oh. Also kind of called Baby Carless, in which the cast of Arliss are part baby, <laughs> part vehicle. Vehicle, okay. Yes, so yeah, Baby Carless, yeah. Kirby Carlisle, okay. Michael Boat Baby, yeah. uh, Sandra baby. Hall, who looks like a wheel and can roll. I think it might be time to develop some new characters with you and some new voices for the okay. cast of Baby Carless, right? I'm so excited. <laughs> it would be a waste not to do it. It would be a waste not to do this. I agree. So, I agree. How are we doing? Are we, are we taking Fat Jack Cerritos? Fat Jack Cerritos. What are we doing? How, are we, how do you want to do it? Huh? What's Fat Jack Cerritos? I'm actually watching the show that you've assigned me to watch. Wow. <laughs> Yes. Wow. Wow. Okay. Oh, wow. 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 Yeah, wow. Yeah, I don't know if I like it. Yeah. Look, it's a, uh, it's a time of great turn. What? <laughs> um, what, what do you, when you think of a baby animated show about a sports agent and his yeah. uh, coworkers and clients, what kind of character would you want to see on that show? Because this is the thing, yeah. Sarah, is like a lot, our main cast right now are infant vehicle hybrid versions of our main characters from Arliss, right? Okay. But we don't want to hire you to do an impression mm -mm. of a younger character. We want you to have ownership in the character. We need to develop Thank some you. new 
original characters exclusive to Baby Carlos. We want you to be the leader of yeah. Baby Carlos. Right. We need new characters. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, I do imagine. I imagine them with very small heads and very big suits. Oh yes. Yeah. Okay. Very big suits. And when you see them from the side, I think they should have very big behinds, like almost like a shelf. Uh -huh. uh, and, and they can have um, the their uh, sportsmen. There yeah. are uh, what are they called in English? Uh, athletes. 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 They can athletes. have the athletes on on the shelf ass. Mm -hmm. Wow. So they got that? they got sort of like a full diaper, which they are using as a platform for their yeah. clients who are also baby athletes to step. Yes. Yeah. I think that's satirical because they are full of crap. Well, that's true. Okay, wait. So this is okay. This feels like fertile territory to me. Okay, so okay. we have our main characters who are infant agents, right? Yes. But what you're making me think is their clients shouldn't be adult sports persons. They should oh, yeah. be baby athletes. You think they should be baby athletes or they should be adult? I think they should be baby athletes. Babies, I think they're baby, baby agents athletes. who specifically specialize in baby athletes. <laughs> okay, I dig it. So we got to think, uh, what, what sports would the baby be good at? Oh my goodness. Uh, uh, crawling, competitive crawling. Competitive crawling. Long okay. distance crawling. Competitive peeing on mommy. Competitive peeing on mommy. Water hey. sports. That's called water sports. It's called water sports. Water sports. I, okay. I know that basketball players are good at dribbling, but so are babies. <laughs> oh, yeah, double dribble. A little double dribble. Double dribble. That's good. So let's try to come up with one uh, character for each of these. We want a professional water sports athlete, a long distance crawler, and a double dribble basketball star. Okay. Perfect. Uh, Drooly, Drooly, Drooly would be a good name for the dribbler. D R O O L I E. Okay, what if Drooly is a nickname in quotes and the name is Drool, D R E W, Drooly in quotes? Ooh. And what if his name is Drooly? I'm sorry, please finish. Yeah, okay. Drooly, that's a great, that's a great yeah, note. Drooly. Drew okay, so his name is Drooly. Yes. Yes. Drew Drew Lee Lee. And his nickname is Drew Lee. Yes. Yeah. Drew Lee Lee. Destined for greatness in this sport. Okay. He's a legacy. Maybe so his father legacy. was also. His father was also a drooling a superstar. His father was also a baby. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and his father was also a baby. His father was also <laughs> a competitive baby. And his and his two of his catchphrases should be my father was also a baby. Yes. And his other catchphrase should be, my shirt is wet. Yes. That's it for his jersey. He never makes it, he's, because he's little. He, he never makes the connection that the reason his shirt is wet is because he's drooled all over it. These are two independent facts. Mm -hmm. okay. Is he not aware of his own drooling? Is he not aware of how good he is at drooling? He's aware of his drooling. He's not, he doesn't have um, object permanence. So mm -hmm. he's not making the connection. And Sarah, you're you're a great actor, as you know. Every character needs a want in order to play them properly. They need a want, and Drew Truly Lee's want is to figure out why his shirt is so wet. That is the unresolvable conflict within him that keeps us tuning in every week. So, do you have any ideas? Is a voice coming to you yet? Do you think you can locate one? Sure. He's, and he's rough and tumble. Drew is rough and tumble. I have to say, he's rough and tumble. He's a rough and tumble baby, and he doesn't know why he's such a wet. Why? This is almost sounding like Big Baby Bagel Bite. <laughs> why was I born? Hey, look. Why was I born? I think that's why, why mess with success? It sounds like Big Baby Bagel Bite. <laughs> yeah, make him sound like a character that everyone already loves. And this, the Cuban Missile 9000, we just showed this on the screen. Our last guest was Dan Hernandez, who wrote... Detective Pikachu. <gasps> you just what? missed each other, but you're both professional Pokemon people. I didn't even think about it. I didn't even think about it. Well, Sarah, you'll come Shift back. passing in, in the five, night. You'll come back in five weeks when we do our 1600 pen marathon. Yes. And you'll okay. we'll, we'll get the full yeah. Pokemon second. Don't, 
don't don't make don't make any plans for what is likely to be the horrific Independence Day weekend, twenty twenty. Yeah, it'll be normal. Yeah, you think it'll be normal? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I, yeah, just a totally yeah. normal weekend. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I think Drew Julie Lee is perfect, right? I think we've hit gold here. Can we just we hit it? Perfect. Sarah, can we just get one clean pickup of, of course, his catchphrase? <laughs> My dad was also a baby. I'll mute all of ours so we can get it very clean. Okay. My dad was also a baby. You want play another one? Let, let me play it back in my cans and see if I have any notes. Play it back in my cans, Patrick. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sarah, love it. I, love I'd it. like, okay. I'd like a, just for the people out there who are going to animate this. Yes. Um, I think it should be a shot of that, mm. uh, and then it pans to, to or, or maybe it pulls out a little to reveal that his dad is there, his his baby dad, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and maybe maybe a just just a quick uh, wah from him. Yeah, I also I, I want to do a pickup of the pickup from Mr. Lee. Yeah, pick up because the because he's Whatever drooling all the time, so he yeah. should really he should have a drooling situation. So yeah. let me do that, and then I'll also do the yeah. wham. Okay. okay. And also, yeah. can I add one more pickup to the pickup of the pickup? Of course, yes. George is saying he wants the camera effect animated, where the camera pulls out very mm -hmm. quickly to show the baby dad. Uh, nice. Could you, could you maybe do a little bit of like foley work for the sound of the camera pulling back? So it would be the line. The original line, my dad was also a baby with more drool than the whoosh of the camera pulling out quickly. Not trying to give you a line ready, make it your own. No problem. And then we want a quick whack. And it's two characters, so it still falls under the standard salary. We great. have to talk over. <laughs> yes, okay, great. Thank you for caring. Um, uh, the wow, what's my objective with the wow? Why am I crying? Uh, middle, uh, he's a uh, middle-aged crisis, midlife crisis. Yes, yeah, because he's no longer a baby. He is a middle-aged. Mr. Lee is a middle-aged baby. Yes, he's mm -hmm. a middle-aged baby. Okay. Yes. Okay. Ready? Okay. And let's let's get a clean pickup here. My dad was also a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, I mean, that sounded great to me. Patrick, can you play it back quickly in my cans? I yeah, sure. Play it back quickly. That sounded great. I think that I think we might have it. Let me hear it. I don't need to hear it. I, th I know it was great. Yep, we got it. We got it. We got it. Great. Got it. Okay, great. Cool. Nailed it. Nailed it. Okay. Cool. All right, so who's another? Let's let's come up with another character. Okay, long distance crawler, or the other one is uh, what was the third sport? Yeah, basketball drooler, long distance crawler. Oh, water sports, water sports. Yeah. yeah. Yes, the pisser. Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, long distance crawler. First name should be Zip with two P's. Z I P P. Zip. Okay. Zip Nielsen, but here's and the Neil part. The Neil part is is K N E E. Yes. -E. yes. Oh and sure. The, and and S O N. So and Zip Nielsen, the long his, distance crawler. His nickname is facetious. It's like when they have a quarterback and they call him Tiny or something. So his name is Zip Nielsen, but in between his nickname is Slowpoke. Okay. So Zip Slowpoke Wait. Nielsen, the long distance crawler. The long distance crawler. Yes. Okay. Is he also middle aged? Has he like passed his prime? No, he's definitely. No, these are all babies. These are yeah, all babies. All babies. Uh, only, the dad, uh, only the dad is not. And a baby. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and one of the things that he says, because he's he's a little bit, he's like uh, an old soul though. He's wise beyond his years. He's a very and, cool cucumber. He's got that kind of like yeah. Michael Jordan style. Like, okay. right. yeah. yeah, cool. And and one of the things that he says is, I've yet to meet the carpet that can burn me good. Yes. And you broke up. Would you mind repeating that? I'm sorry. Yeah, George, can we just get another take? Can we get another I've yet to meet the... I've yet to meet the carpet that can burn me good. 
I've yet to meet the carpet that can burn me good. And this is, I know this is a big ask, but this is what I'd say to try to keep in the back of your uh, head, Sarah. Yeah. He's confident, but not arrogant. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I do. Like he's not braggadocious. He's a rascal. He's a, he's a little rascal. He's a little, little rascal. He's kind of a little rascal. <laughs> Okay. Do you imagine these all, I mean, I know this is a question more for me, but uh, as, as, as co-creators, do you think they should all have baby type voices or should I veer into adult voices? I mean, yeah. I, I kind I of want to no. see, no, what are you going to say, George? I, I think it's okay if he has a kind of a gruff voice for a baby. Right. Okay. Okay. Because this is He's a little he's toughy. A little he's a little toughy. He's an old yeah. school. You kind of want of like a foot in each world. You know what and that also, is? And also think about how uh, the original cast of Arliss will be playing their characters. Right. So they're all, their voices are all fully adult voices, you know? Right. Okay. Right. right. Okay. So I think I think there's room to play here. I don't even want to necessarily steer you in too much in one direction. I want to see what you just come up with, and then we can work from there, you know? Okay. Uh, yeah. Well... I've yet to meet the carpet that could burn me good. <laughs> Love the giggle. Love the giggle. <laughs> Love the giggle. Uh, yeah. Patrick, can you play it back? Maybe says, yeah. yeah. While well, he's playing it back, I'll give you another line to do. The next line would be uh, someone calls him a rascal, and he goes, Rascal? Oh, I like the sound of that. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. Rascal. Oh, I like the sound of that. <laughs> I like this guy. He's kind of got. He's, he's got. He's maybe the Han Solo of our show. You know. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. And now I want to um, hop in and say that we are up to twenty-seven hundred eighty-five dollars okay. and sixty-nine cents. Oh, wow. Okay. And we should mention. I mean, the last time you came on your show, people made not only drawings of your characters set to your vocal performances, but full on animation. We are expecting the same here. A full show is yeah. what I'm expecting. We want the show. full show. Yeah. Yes. Pressure, no pressure. I, th I think that's great. I'm trying to think if I even have any notes, like just for fun, if there's anything we want to try, you know? Sure. But it was, so, it sounded so good to me. Could you just do some full, uh, like, like he's like crawling, you know? Yeah. 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 Maybe laughing, maybe laughing while he crawls. I think maybe yeah. he laughs while he crawls. Yeah, just sort of a confident chuckle. Like, I love this game. You know, that kind of thing. I want to throw you, I want to throw you a quick line. Okay. If you're not crawling, you're stalling. If you're not crawling, you're stalling. It is um, actually amazing how quickly George comes up with these catchphrases. <laughs> They're all gold. <laughs> Genuinely uh, impressive. All of them. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Wow, I think we're two. Um, two. And, and it also means that now on Baby R List, there can be an opening crawl. Ooh. That's true. Love that. Wow. We, should, uh, we should come up with a little girl. Yeah, I, I mean yeah. now, but now see, Patrick, you put us in a position where the girl needs to be into water sports, <laughs> unless we want to add a fourth character. No, no, no. Nope. 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 <laughs> this is she pees. She pees. Uh, she pees. Um, and, and that's what she does. Idea. He insisted on it. I'm just going yeah. for uh, some diversity in the cast. You know. Thank you. I appreciate. Um, it. We don't want a bunch of boys. It's not a well, boys. Yeah. Um, so we need a name for the for the girl who pees. Yes. Sissy Pistington. Penelope. 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 Wait a second. <laughs> With two e's. Wait a second. Penelope. That's cute. That's Penelope. Cute. Wait, but what about Pissy Sissington? What were the names? <laughs> I think we don't I, want to let that. Fly. I think I think Pissy I think Pissy Sissington should be her rival. Yes. Oh. What if it's just What if it's just this? That's well, great. Penelope, Penelope. 
Right. And I think, and, uh, Sarah, I think you just got uh, your quote up because we've now gone to four characters fully. Yeah. I, we can and, and, and I have a, and I have another character in the chamber that I'm going to get to in a second. Okay, okay. cool. So this is Penelope, and then we're going to have to do sis, Pissy Sissington, her right? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, okay. Penelope, yeah. I think, first of all, has the heart of a champion, right? <laughs> Naturally. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh... Uh, what, what's what, what, one how of the things she, peeing? Yeah, go ahead, no, please. I, I think one of the things that she says is time to do what I do best. Mm. Okay, <laughs> I feel like I need to assume a position, like a <laughs> diaper changing. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you need, whatever you I'm need. Do that. I'm Wait. trying to think if there are any other character. What, what are you going excuse to me. Say? excuse me? You guys are just blown right by the fact that Sarah just said she has to assume the position, Robert Wool. Robert, Robert Wolf Wolf. had a series of HBO specials called Assume the Position. He had a series of HBO of Arliss. specials. Arliss himself had a series of educational stand-up specials called Robert Wool Assume the Position. And it shows me you were the right choice for this project. Thank you so much. That's it, right. I haven't it, seen it. I'm, I'm missing a comedy education. You're a natural. You're a natural. Yes, Thank you. you're a natural. And, okay. and I will say this, I will say this, you know, there have been some hiccups in the uh, launch of HBO Max. Assume the position was not, a, is not currently available. It was on launch. Uh. Assume the position is not available on HBO Max. Yes. That's unfortunate. But yeah. I'm sure I can find it somewhere. Maybe, that, maybe, maybe in June. Maybe in June. Maybe. Okay. All right. Have a chat with them. Let them know that I'm, I'm trying to get educated here. Okay. Is, is Pokemon so. on HBO Max? No, uh, it, it's going to be on Netflix this season, but it's been, oh. on, it's been on Disney for the last few years. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. interesting. Okay. Conspiracy. All right. All right. What was the line again? Time to do what I do best. I do best. Yeah. Wait, and I feel like I want to throw something out here. Okay. Yes. Great. So far, we've had two American babies. Yeah. But Arliss represents international clients. That's right. I'm wondering if this is almost, you know, Penelope is kind of like our equivalent of like a young, like a Russian gymnast in the Olympics. Okay. You know what I'm, I'm saying? Sure. It's sort yeah. of that, that yep. sort of energy. Okay. Okay. You got it. Time to do what I do best. I don't know why I just made a British though. I mean, it's interesting. I do what I do best. <laughs> now, see, now I'm starting to think my my inclination was wrong. Maybe the move here is that Penelope is a very fancy British baby. I would love that. You and know, it would make sense that Sissy Pissington, Sissy Pissington sounds British, so it makes sense that maybe they went to the same boarding school. Yeah. So let's try, let's go even further in that direction, Sarah. I want to okay. I want to make Sissy Pissington this British one. Maybe Penelope should okay. be around. Okay, fair enough. What are you going to say? Yeah, let's do it. We're okay. up twenty nine eighty five sixty nine. Oh, we are less than fifteen dollars away from a oh. stretch goal. Sarah, at three thousand dollars, George has promised that he will get amped. What does that mean? We don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Well, uh, I can't wait to see it. Am I going to be here for it? I think I am, right? I think you hopefully will be. Yeah. Yeah. People yeah. better pony up. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. I want to see this. So All I right. do think your instinct All is, right. I think you want Sissy Pissington to be sort of like a blue blood rival. So, mm -hmm. so I don't know if yeah. it's like we want to make uh, Penelope kind of like a cockney baby. We want to make it a sort of class issue within the UK, or if we want to make her from a different country like Russia, as we were first thinking. Let's try. Let's try. Okay, let's try it. Let's try it. Time to do what I do best. I, or, I like that. I that like it. Good. Okay, look, give me another alt. Give me an option. Time to do what I do best. Can we get a letter rip? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Here's the British version. Okay, and remember, like Robert Wall, assume the position. Assume the position. <laughs> Let her rip. Let her rip. 
Let's hmm. work. Yeah, no, I gotta work on it. No, I know. I think these are both yeah. good. I'm trying to cool. think which. George, as the, as the overall, I mean, the story yeah. head on this, which do you think better serves the story? Um, I, I think I, I, I think that's something we'll, we can fix in post. We have the options. Okay. Uh, Surprise, yeah, hey, I, I wouldn't worry about that yet. So hey, we George, might, George, you got to get hiked, yeah. baby. 3,000. have to get hiked, George. Time to get amped. All right. Got to get amped. All right. Okay. <sighs> to go wild. <laughs> He's gonna get up, folks. He's gonna stand up. Okay. You're very cold. All right. And I'll also uh, say we are at a hundred we're hundred and ninety dollars away from from sixteen hundred ten. Okay. From sixteen hundred ten. Great. Right. 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 I don't know, Sarah. Right. Like this. Right. George, back up a little bit. Yeah. George. <laughs> Close. What's he doing? <laughs> What's he doing? What's happening? George, Are you okay? George, George, what's happening? George. George. Is he okay? You guys, no. I don't know. I think, he's, I think he's trying to Hulk out, I think. I think he's trying to he's Hulk out. He's getting bigger. He's getting bigger. Oh, oh, sir, getting bigger. Oh, no. You're turning oh. violent, Violet. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't rip the bad jacket. Maybe unzip some of those zippers. You know what? Take the jacket off, George. Just take the jacket take off. off. Take it off. No, unzip the zippers. <laughs> George, you're too plating right now. <laughs> Don't rip it! Oh my god. Don't rip it, unzip it! <laughs> oh my god, Mr. George. Lucas, are you okay? Sarah, you need to know we've been building up this all day. George, do the do the sleeves zip off? It looks like there are zippers at the shoulders. Oh, well, they're th certainly those, yes. <laughs> oh, maybe make a muscle, like, like flex your muscle so that it holds better when you unzip. <laughs> no, I think flex one and then unzip hand. <laughs> George. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. George, you sound like a borax right now. <laughs> Does he do this every show? No, this no. is new. This, this is new. new. I've been friends with him for over 20 years. I've never seen this before. <laughs> is he? Where did he go? I don't know. I, I'm scared. He's, He's going to jump scare us. He's going to scare us. Where? Sure. I, maybe he left. Where is retired filmmaker George Lucas? <laughs> Where is he? Is he at his office? Yeah, he's in Marin County. Cool. George, what are you doing? Oh no, oh no, he's got more jello. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just lunchtime, he's fine. George, no! George, be careful! Oh my god. Oh my god, George. I haven't had one of those in a long time. How, how does it taste, George? Where I get it? Oh my god, George. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Use it for oh, George. George, are you okay? I'm amped. I'm amped. You're, yeah, you're right. I'm amped. George. Oh, no. Oh, it's oh, banana time. George. George. Banana time. Wow. Oh, we lost George. Camera for a second. Wow. 
Wow. Wow, George. Oh. George, you are in beast mode. Oh, no. No, another one. <laughs> no, no. Where did it come from? George. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Lord. This is going to be too much, George. George. George, <laughs> you're going to spunk. Oh, God. George. <laughs> Donate to the National Bail Fund Network. Yes, please below. donate. Please um, donate, people. We're so close to 3,200, guys. We got to get that six. Wow. And left the stream. Wow. <laughs> slowly. Wow. Dude, slowly. George, we are at, we are at $3,115, George. Oh, my God. What? We're so close, guys. We're at $3,115. People should pause our list. We'll start the new episode in one minute. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. This got so dramatic. I didn't expect it. I, f I feel things now. Sarah, Thank we you. had no idea what to expect. You know, it's Pissy always Sissington. Pissy Sissington should say, <laughs> you made a mistake. <laughs> you made a big mistake. Say no, it again. Don't say big. Don't say big. Just say you made a just mistake. A, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to ruin your words. It's okay. okay. No, I'm glad you tried it, but it's got to be this. Thanks. Okay. Let's get a clean take. Okay. George just hates improv. It's not your fault. He hates improv. I thought this was a friendly space. Okay. It's a friendly space. He just hates improv. Fine. You made a mistake. You made a mistake. Uh, that was great, Sarah. Can you just give me a moment? I'm going to check with George some notes, great, okay? Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. Hey, George. George. Mm -hmm. I'm really thinking we want a, a big in there before piss steak. Mm -hmm. I know this might make you look bad because you just uh, corrected her for doing it, but it really feels like it flows better. You know, it really bridges the two words to put in. You've made a big piss steak. That's right. That's okay. the advantage of not shooting on film. That's why we don't shoot on film. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the button. Okay. Hey, Sarah. Yep. Yeah. Hi. Great work. We love it. Uh, we so love it. George just had a new idea. Can we try one where you say uh, we throw a big in there? Or do you say I made a, a big mistake? You made a big mistake. Sorry. You made a big mistake. It's a great you, idea. Thank you. Yeah. Pencil to write that down. Do you think you have it? I think I have it. Okay, let's let's line one up. Okay, ready? Whenever you're ready. You made a big mistake. You made a big mistake. This is good. I think we're good. Okay, so uh, Patrick, can I we mark? I have another line for Sissy. Yeah, for that one though, Patrick, can we mark two as the select, one as the alt? Sure. Yep. Two, one. That's great. the backup. Okay, great. <clears throat> New line. New line. Okay. Uh, I piss my mommy. I piss my mommy? Yes. Great. Thank you so much. <laughs> like she pisses her. <laughs> she, like she misses her. Okay, ready? Let's get this. Let's get a clean one. Okay, ready? No, I piss my mommy. No, I piss my mommy. I think good instinct on mommy. I think that really made it sing, right? George, do you have any notes? That's great. Perfect, yeah. perfect, perfect. Perfect. Uh, and one last character that I want to try with you, uh, and it's one of the few non-baby characters, oh. um, uh, is a character named uh, Pumpy. Uh, Can we start Pumpy the episode is... real quick, George? Yes, let's start the episode. Okay, ready, everyone? Start the new episode of our list. Three, Three, eleven. Three, two, one, start. Great. Uh, and uh, Pumpy, he's the he runs a filling station, mm. and so when Kirby Carlisle needs to get filled up with uh, gasoline, because mm -hmm. um, he's a part car. Yes, he's part. Uh, Pumpy, and he says things like "fill her up," mm. and uh, 
And uh, does anyone else have any ideas for jokes that Pumpy, Pumpy could say? I, I got a pitch. What if instead of being named Pumpy Pumperson, his name is Filler Up? Sure. His first name Phil, last name Er Up. Er Up. Uh, I put Pumpy in as a nickname because I always thought it was just Pumpy, but I like Filler Up as a uh, a full name. So what if it's fi what if it's Phil? <coughs> Philip. Philip Reginald. Up. Yeah. Sure. Philip Reginald Up. Sure. And he's a fancy gas station owner. Phil Art Up, and his close friends call him Pumpy. Pumpy. Okay. Awesome. This is a, an adult character. He has to really be kind of like a sage voice of reason in the baby carless universe. Okay, can I make him a little goofy? My instinct is to make him a little goofy. Please do, I love goofy things. They're it's fun. a comedy, we want the show to be very funny. So, oh, oh. yeah. Okay, whenever you're ready, sir. Okay. okay. Fill her up! <laughs> How's that? Uh, That's great. Yeah. Sarah, can we try a take? I'd love to hear a mustache on him. A mustache? You know, I, I, we're thinking, we're still at the conceptual stage. We're thinking, we're playing around with the idea of Phil having a mustache. I'd love to hear it in his voice. If you okay. could maybe put a push broom on that okay, voice. So it's a, it, you're in the right zip code, definitely. Zip code, okay, that was my question. You're okay. in the right zip code. I'd, <laughs> I'd love to hear a mustache on that, okay. Okay. Fill her up, fill her up. Hmm. That last one, I feel like we're getting somewhere. I, yeah. want, I want to push you even, have the confidence to add <clears throat> another centimeter onto the mustache. It's not very well kept. You know what I'm saying? It's sort of going down past the upper lip into the mouth. No one said he was a, 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 a very hygiene, hygienic man. So that's, I think, have the courage to add another centimeter, but you're definitely, you're in the right zip code. You're in the right zip code. Okay. <laughs> Fill her up! Fill her up, man! Sorry, I, I improvised. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, that's good. That's good. That's good. No, okay. I, think, I think we found it, right, George? I think we found it. Yeah. yeah. Fill her up, man! That's good. Something like that. Now, guys, we actually, we have another guest. I'm going to bring him oh. in because I don't, I don't know if he has any thoughts on this. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, he is a, a, a documentary filmmaker. He's a journalist. Why? He made in his show Dark Taurus on Netflix, which is very good. Oh. He may have seen his documentary, which I love so much, and he knows this, uh, called Tickled. Please welcome David Ferrier. David! Hey, hi from New Zealand. It's so oh, good to oh. be here, my goodness. New Zealand, you know, that's where we all want to move. I know. You <laughs> it's the best it. place. We've just completely good eliminated numbers. COVID, good no numbers. new cases. I know you don't want to be hearing this, but yeah. we're free to walk around and there's no more problems. Yeah, great. Feel for you guys. Uh, you, you know that you are yeah. somehow a, our third guest from New Zealand. Oh, really? not, not today, not today, but over the last couple of weeks, you are now the third. There's a lot of us. You know, we're up to we're up to five million people now, so we're um, there's a lot of us down here. I know it's yeah. you guys are really pouring salt in the wound. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, there were times when the Shire was peaceful, and then, then, then before you knew it, things went wrong again. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you, know, you never know when it's all going to turn and, and look terrible again. So I just fingers crossed about the whole thing. But I'm excited to be watching the show that I've never watched before. I um, uh, we don't even have HBO in New right. Zealand, or let alone Go what, or Nows or any yeah. of them. So what's sort of got what do you have? Set up. Yeah, what do you have that is the, the New Zealand, what you would think would be the New Zealand equivalent of uh, a premium channel? Um, Look, we, got, we have Netflix now, which is very exciting mm -hmm. for us. Um, we right. have Netflix. But we've got like weird versions of things. Like if I wanted to watch HBO shows, there's a service here called Neon, which I go to. And that has some mm -hmm. of the stuff, but not all of it. So. But I've set up some kind of VPN on my my computer here, and I'm looking at what is available for you on HBO, and it's oh, I'm I'm blown away. 
Like, I've never heard of this show. Wow. I haven't heard of most of these shows. Well, it's we recently, I mean, David, for your information, we recently took it to the max, re-HBO. So the, the possibilities have really opened up only in the last week. What well, I'm I'm excited by it. It's it's uh it's blowing my mind. You know, we've only got three well, channels like, on TV in New Zealand. Many, so to have this open up is huge. Wow. And you know, uh, tickled. You know, many people saw tickled on HBO. Yes. True. That's what I heard. And and um, and, uh, and, the, uh, and the and the follow up. The 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 sort of uh, coda. Um, where you you see the you know which I really. Uh, uh, I, I think is an essential part of the experience of the of the yeah, Tickle well, franchise. You really start. You really have the 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 kernel of a franchise there. Yeah. You don't want to let that dry up. You want to build that into many more. Uh, you need to merchandise it. You know, there's so, so many things that I, I, I see potential for. You want to keep going, yes. Yeah, I think I missed the boat on Tickled merchandise. Uh, maybe well, because next time, maybe Seth, Tickled me, too. Well, here's the thing. The, here's the thing. HBO has both Tickled and Sesame Street. Now, what is one of the most popular pieces of merchandise mm. of the past few decades is the Tickle Me Elmo. Yes. Uh, well, there's no reason There's no reason that you shouldn't be getting a piece of that. That's a very short walk. I am annoyed that we didn't have that crossover of like some yeah. sort of like fetishized Tickle, tickle Me Elmo doll. That would have been <laughs> yeah. so perfect. It's, that is money on the table, David. That is money on the table. Tickle me, Terry. George, you have the best ideas. Like you're always coming out with good ideas. It blows my mind. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Oh. Folks, I gotta go. This has been hey. so fun. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah, thank you so much. We thank really so much. made the most of your time. Uh, I think we, we got most of that episode in the can now. I mean, this was great. Yeah. We have. I think show. we have we have the pilot in the can. Perfect. <laughs> I can't wait for the. It's premiere. nice to briefly meet you, Sarah. Yes, Hi. you too. Hi. Hi. <laughs> All right. Have fun. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Um, uh, someone on the chat is saying, I def went down a dark Taurus rabbit hole one day uh, mm. after the episode on the, the haunted house with the waiver. The, the McKamey Manor. Yeah, Russ oh. and McKamey Manor. We got a lot of feedback on the episode because obviously people know McKamey Manor in the States and it's got so much viral attention over the years. It feels like every year, like Vice will do something about it or The Guardian or The Time, like someone's done it. So going there was um, it was a real experience, this idea that people pay to get essentially tortured for the fun of it. That was, uh, yeah, America. It's got a lot, of, a lot of odd things going on there. So weird. It's so wild. Um... How it, oh, Shelly Berman is in this episode. The great Shelly Berman, inside Shelly Berman and outside Shelly Berman. Yeah, Larry David's father on Curb Your Enthusiasm. Uh, so good. Zohan's father, and you don't mess with the Zohan. Wow, okay. A favorite film of Watto's. <laughs> That's not yeah. right. That, yeah, very, you know, obviously playing a lot of father figures, which, yeah. you know, that's very Star Wars. Yes. You know, Guys, it's so all about left. fathers. We are less than thirty-five dollars away from thirty-two hundred dollars. Wow! We're at thirty-one sixty-five sixty-nine right now. Wow! Uh, I will put the banner back up, but you got to get us over that hump. And I will also say, a few people sent us hundred-dollar donations. If you want Watto to send you a message, yes. a cameo message, uh, let us know and we'll do it. Yes. Um, uh, so, David, how's the mood in New Zealand? People seem happy. Yeah. That that everything seems to be going okay. I don't I don't even know yeah. how to word it. It almost seems like everything there is uh, uh, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty good. I mean, we have this prime minister Jacinda Ardern at the moment who is just kind of doing all the right things, and we locked <laughs> off our borders pretty quickly. And you know, we had people tested really quickly. We had people isolated really quickly. So. Yeah, things um, got under control. But we're, we're also lucky because we're tiny. There's only 5 million of us, mm -hmm. and we're surrounded by water. So it makes it very easy to close things down. It feels like in the States, you've mm -hmm. got this huge issue where it's like 50 yeah. countries in one. You've all got different rules. There's different messaging. Like, it's a hard right. job. But i yeah. got to say that, yeah, we're it's good over here. Like, New Zealand's good. The one thing that's yeah. terrible is you're living is winter and it's cold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, 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 you're basically living in Gungan City. You know, uh, uh, but uh, but you know it's cold because it's wet, 
but it's you know it's its own little isolated area and you can kind of control things. Um, yeah, it feels good. And if you fly in here at the moment, you've got to be isolated for two weeks before you can move around or do anything. So, yeah, it's cool. We've got a cool female prime minister. She's great. I, yeah, um, I feel, like, I feel cool. like you're you're trying to sort of write off how impressive the handling of the virus in your country was. Uh, you know what else is uh, relatively small on a geographic level and surrounded by water? Uh, New York City. <laughs> And uh, hasn't yeah. been hot here. Yeah, didn't go so. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's. Yeah, it's. It's painful because I mean, I've got friends in New York, and it's. It's horrible seeing what everyone's going through there. Um, and then it's like this melting pot because you've had COVID and you've had everyone inside freaking out, and then obviously you've got this huge race problem that's rearing its head at the moment, and people are angry and, and rightfully so. So it's, yeah. it's really weird in New Zealand because we just all glued to Twitter and Instagram down here just watching what's happening. And it, yeah. it, we feel it feels close, even though we're far away, you know? Mm -hmm. Here's an yeah. question. People often say, yeah, I, I hear that phrase a lot. You know, people often will refer to America as a melting pot. Yes. But at the moment, it actually just feels like a melting pot. Yes, right. It feels like... <laughs> A pot in the it's middle. Just like, of it's no longer. It's melting. just like, oh, the pot itself is melting. Yes. Everything's just spilling everywhere. Right. Yes, that's what it feels like. And I've just been getting a lot of messages lately, and I'm sort of tongue in cheek, but basically being like, if we do another season of Dark Tourists, just do the whole thing in America. It's yep. just like, where is more bleak and dark and messed up right now? So uh, just like, go there and do a whole season. You're not going to run out of material, I will tell you that much. No, exactly, right? It sounds really sad, but it's this weird reality we live in, you know? Uh, what What does it feel like to like look at uh, the person uh, leading your country and feel like, oh, they seem like sane and responsible and capable of feeling empathy for other human beings. Yeah, empathy is a big thing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, I don't know, I, I feel really proud. It's, it, it's, I mean, for her to convince a whole, you know, all five million of us to stay indoors incredibly quickly and to get this thing under control. Yeah. And not to be on Twitter trying to incite more violence or yeah. that's, that's a big one. I would say that's a pretty big one on our bingo card right now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what I don't know what's going on there, but I think I, I wish more people would sort of take her lead in the way things yeah. are being done because she's kind of proven that you can lead with kindness and compassion and it works, you know, it, it, like, it really does work. And, and now it's like rubbing your faces. Rubbing it, but... it. Yes, it does. I was going to say, it feels like now you're rubbing it then. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but the sad thing is, I love America. Like, my favorite episodes of Dark Tourists and, like, Tickled was all in America and I had the best time and everyone's kind and great. And it is a great country. And yet, it's it's just imploding and it doesn't have to yeah. it's so it's so frustrating to watch i just want to restate that your case for loving america was that you got good material for your movie and tv show about <laughs> weird disturbing things happening under the <laughs> uh, point taken david <laughs> uh do you want a documentary about freaky stuff yeah, yeah come to the states baby that's our main export <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm loving the show. Uh, my first, I love the feel my, of it. God. Yeah, heartless rules. Yeah. Uh, now, David, my first, uh, my first film, my first professional film job was on a documentary. Uh, you may or may not have seen it. Uh, did you ever, you ever see Gimme Shelter? Um, I, I absolutely did. Yes. Yeah, which is available on HBO Max uh, if you're able to uh, access that on your VPN. I was a camera. I, I was a camera operator. And my camera, at, I was at Altamont, and my camera jammed. I shot like uh, 100 feet of film, and then the camera broke. So none of, the, none of the footage was used in the movie, but it is my first film credit. You look up Gimme Shelter, you look up George Lucas on IMDb, that is the first film credit. Um, and of course, I've yeah, produced uh, other documentaries. Like, yeah, produced uh, uh, Pawakatsi, the sequel to Koyana Skatsi, which is you know, sort of a documentary, but also kind of an art film. You're right. Where do you um, do you guys all enjoy documentary? Are you sort of where do you all sit on doc? Uh, I love documentary films. Love them. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, George, George was originally Patrick. Patrick, you like him? I do. I love docs. I just want... was... all right. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say George was originally supposed to direct uh, Apocalypse Now, and his version was supposed to be more sort of docudrama style. 
uh, Coppola was the one who made yeah. it a little more heightened and stylized. Yes. I mean, one thing yeah. that I, I, one thing I'm curious about, George, is I, I've been getting into some a lot of behind the scenes kind of docs that were shot around Star Wars mm -hmm. and just the differing yeah. styles and the access that was allowed mm -hmm. and. And I right. mean, where do you sit on, on you know, obviously giving the squeaky clean image of how a film has gone versus a nitty gritty yeah. what this is really like? Yeah, you know, it, it, this is a thing you sort of learn over time. Uh, you know, the, the, we had certain levels of access when we were doing the, uh, the sequel trilogies, uh, the sequel trilogy uh, back in the late 70s, early 80s, where you'd sort of, we were still building up star wars at that point so you want to you know invite people in to build up by the time we got to making the prequel trilogies we sort of started making let's keep this a little more in-house and basically mm -hmm. i would just say like you can you can talk just have rick talk you know, my producer rick mccallum just like let him talk and he knows what to say and what to not say mm -hmm. and, and and i think it's I, I think in making a documentary uh you know you want full access but in being the subject of a documentary you want to be very uh cautious um, mm. Because, as you know, you know sometimes you make a documentary, and the best, most interesting parts of the story are not necessarily uh, going to be. Uh, you're not going to be welcomed by the subject. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. Uh, um, I want to so share. Powering up my laptop there as we got to lose power. I do. I it's do. Really interesting, like George. Yeah, I'm. You know. Oh, I saw this. The baby Carlos artwork. We're trying to take the cartoon show. That's right. a spin-off of this show where the characters are all babies, but also uh, half vehicles. Uh, David, I do feel, though, I mean, you were talking about you've been watching more behind-the-scenes stuff about Star Wars. A, I feel like with George, there was a lot more transparency in the process. There was an amazing, like, feature-length documentary about the making of Phantom Menace where George is letting camera crews in as he's writing after he's watching yeah, the yeah. first cut of the film. That's I, what I want to see. That's what I, I want to see in my Star Wars documentary. Disney very much kept the lockbox on. So Disney has been very much controlling the narrative. George let the struggle of making the film be shown to people. He wanted the process to be transparent. Disney has been keeping that more in the shadows. I also think George has talked a lot about how much the visual style of Star Wars was influenced by documentaries. I mean, the... Uh, yeah. The, the actual the x-wing battles all of that stuff he studied real sort of uh footage of uh, dogfighter pilots Dog in wars. i mean it's like that's those are the, yeah. the compositions and the editing rhythms you know i think george, much more grounded much more grounded right he's george has been a, a big defender of documentaries in every sense yeah and that's good to know at the same time like you know i you filmmaker to know that means a lot you know yeah. Uh, at the same time, as you mentioned before, Hearts of Darkness, uh, Apocalypse Now, uh, was uh, Apocalypse Now was originally my idea. Fran my mentor Francis did it while I was busy working on Star Wars. And then, of course, many people argue that uh, Hearts of Darkness, the documentary about the making of Apocalypse Now, is even uh, more vital a piece of yeah. filmmaking than the movie itself. Yes. Yeah. Now, someone in the comments today is mm -hmm. saying that in the Josh Gad Lord of the Rings reunion today. They showed a behind the scenes of Peter Jackson specifically saying how Gollum would far exceed Jar Jar. George, this feels like the perfect place to talk about. <laughs> it also feels uh, like really. we got to get Gad on. Gotta get Gad. Yeah. yeah. We got to get Gad. Um, yeah. Well, you wouldn't, yeah. I'm not even sure we'd have Olaf if we didn't have Jar Jar first. Absolutely wow. not. Wow. Jar Jar was the first, um, unquestionably. He was the first Olaf. Yes. And. Uh, yeah, it is true that, that uh, Jar Jar made it possible for Gollum to exist. Yes. Um, so I don't know if that's a if I don't know if that's a, a criticism, but I'll take it as a a thank you and an apology. <laughs> I think I, yeah, I think it's very valid, and I think we wouldn't have you know Lord of the Rings as our main thing here in New Zealand. Yeah. I would argue that 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 wouldn't be what it was without the groundwork you'd laid with um, not only with your yeah. film specifically, but and with that with and that Jar Jar specifically. And that best picture uh, Oscar for Return of the King, part of that belongs to Jar Jar Binks, and that and that that can't be unsaid. Yes, absolutely. I was actually in a secondhand store down the road the other day in New Zealand, and there was a um, there was an original Jar Jar um, Binks figurine for sale in the original packaging. 
Now, uh, wow. now, David, you say you were in a store. What was that like? Yeah, please. What was that like? Yeah, it's it's really. I mean, you can talk to people. You can physically no, um, slow down. interact slow down. with others. They take your temperature. They take your temperature. Uh, uh, no, we we don't. They take your temperature because we don't have. <laughs> David, Great. you, you got to slow Great. down and go step by step because we're dying for these sorts of work. details. Treat it like it's Literally. a rock fiction. What were you wearing yeah. as you walked into the store? How many security the store? checkpoints were there? Yeah, how no, many questions was, did they um, ask you before you could step inside? And, I, and after that, I went to a, um, a cafe and had some lunch with people, and we all got on, and uh, it was it was heavenly. It was okay. great. David, now you're making a joke because that's illegal. You're not allowed to do that anymore. No, no one's allowed to do that anymore. Um, hey, you'll, get you you'll get there eventually. You'll get there eventually. Yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah. How big do you think? How do you? How, how big do you think the spike will be in two weeks? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's not think about. For that. you, when you I went into the store. Yeah, let's <laughs> think about it, George. Let's talk about something else. We want to live through yeah, this vicariously. Okay. Well, did you buy anything at the store, David? <laughs> well, I was going to buy Jar Jar, but it was just. He, I got to say, he was too expensive. It was just too much money to part with. Oh, for, how um, expensive? Well, he's, 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 worth he's worth it. He's worth it. He's worth. How much was he? How much? It was like sixty dollars, I think. Oh, wow. And what what kind of scale? Are we I can't even. David, I, like I, nine, I'm not joking like when I tell you. Inch. It's a large, a nine incher. Okay. Yeah, I've got, I've got. David, I've got I don't know if this sounds out of the touch, but I genuinely don't even know. The only David, I don't want to sound like I'm out of touch. Oh, it's not the size. The dog, oh, Jar Jar. Jimmy so Jar -Jar Cameron, Jar -Jar Ridley. Yeah. Yeah. yeah of course. Yeah. Well, who do you think would win in a fight? The alien from Aliens or Jar Jar Binks? They both have dangerous tongues. <laughs> and bear in mind, Jar Jar is, is he has a, you know, he's clumsy, but yeah. he's just as likely to slip on something that would kill the alien. That's the thing. Like, <laughs> Jar Jar is just Jar -Jar. as likely to yeah. trip, hit the button that opens the airlock, but get yeah. his feet tangled in something that means he doesn't get sucked out and the alien does. He causes and so much damage. And I think if you go far enough back on both of them, they both uh, evolved into modern man. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love the Alien prequels. I love the Alien prequels so much. They make the movies make sense. Um, I wish instead of Alien versus Predator, they did Alien versus Jar Jar. That would have been much better. Jar Jar Binks. Oh, my God. People would be watching that movie every single day right now if that existed. Anyone in the um, chat who's been making fan art, make an Alien versus Jar Jar Binks fan art. And have their tongues intertwined. Now, David, I, I don't want to sound like uh, like some out-of-touch billionaire, but when you said $60, I genuinely had no idea what you meant. I don't yeah, even understand. No, I, I can words. understand that. Yeah. I mean, down $60. Here in, you know, what can you get for $60? I mean, that's... Um, you know, you can what get a good I, meal to feed four people out of what? 60 I reckon, out in the town, you know? How many how many schools can you fund with sixty dollars? <laughs> you can sure. I forget that I have to put things in language you'd understand. I he mean, he only understands yeah. things in terms of how much it costs per school. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> the lowest you can go. Smallest increment that George deals with is a school. Sixty dollars is like point zero 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 six billion, George. Oh, okay. So yeah, you got tiny. it. You got it. Yeah, I'm surprised yeah, you didn't buy it by accident. Here in New Zealand, we were trying to sort of figure out if people with a lot of money are kind of in touch with what the regular schmucks are, um, are spending money on. It's always, you know, how much is a bottle of um, milk? That's our, um, that's our mm -hmm. sort of go-to. Is that what you use in America as well to try and trick people out? Yes. Yeah, a gallon of milk, yeah. How much is a gallon, George? What would you say? Uh, probably, I would assume, the same as a, a Jar Jar Brinks, uh, $60. <laughs> See, I think I think the problem is that George only understands like buying milk in bulk large enough to feed an entire for schools. School. Right, that's how he yeah to help schools. Right, he can't think in terms yeah, of yeah. And uh, and it, is this what we were looking at, David? Does this look? Yeah, like this was it. Saw? This was the figure. Yeah, sixty dollars and fully posable. That's what almost pushed me over the edge to get it fully it posable. Imagine what you could do, David. You. David, wow. I want you to go back to the, are you going to revisit this store? Is this a store you can go back to? Yeah, it is. I could do it today. <laughs> George. Okay. 
If only because, I could go back to not it. to bring everybody not to bring everybody down, but there are a lot of stores that don't exist uh, yeah. that existed a week ago. Right. And you should you should feel good that you can go back to a store. And yeah, yeah. you should go back. <laughs> you should go back to that store as soon as possible. Yes. How about this? Do me a favor, David. David, make me this promise. Um, it was you said it was sixty dollars. Sixty dollars, George. Yes. For the next 60 days, every day, just take $1, set it aside, <laughs> and after 60 days, go back to the store. And if it's still there, if it's still there, <laughs> please, please tell me you'll buy it. Make this one sacrifice, it, it, you, Every day, buy a small coffee rather than a large, <laughs> and put that money yeah. in the Jar Jar Fund. George, I mean, hearing oh. this from you, I mean, you, you've had a big impact on my life and, and my experience in, in film and what I enjoy. So for you, I will... I will do that, George. I'll, or if, I'll do I, just do it on do it on whatever time timeline you want. You can put aside fifty cents a day, yeah. and and then double the time frame. And right. if you go out and if you show up and it's gone, then it's just case sera, yeah. sera, You know that is how we buy things in New Zealand. We see an expensive item, and each day we walk by and give them a little coin. Of course. <laughs> and eventually, after a year, we go and collect our item. That's how we do things down under. Yes. That's a great way to do it. Guys, let's start episode 12, just so we're right on. Here we go. Now, this one's called, What Would I Do Without Wu? Uh, what Would I Do Without Wu? This is referring Great. to Rita Wu, played by Sandra. Oh. All right, and we will start in one, two, three. Starting a minute early. Uh, I mean, this uh, you might uh, relate to this episode hard, David, because you're living in the reality where you're asking yourself, what am I doing without that Jar Jar doll? This is kind of like very similar to what it hits hard. It hits yeah. really hard, actually. Yes. These I find these credits uh, very inspiring. I really like these credits. They are. Yeah. Um, are, are they're very fun. Thing in your country, David, are the sports back on? Uh, no, we don't have any sports on yet. Those haven't happened. Big gatherings are still um, sure. lacking. Oh, okay. Not so great now, huh? Yeah. What sport is the show about, actually, specifically? Is it baseball? Is it? He's an agent, so it covers the. It runs the gamut. He's a he's a high powered sports agent. That's so he great. deals with casting. So you can incorporate all these sports into the one show. What a genius strike! He tried to start a volleyball league at one point. Yes, he does everything. Look at this montage: golf, volleyball, tennis, Andre well, O's in this hockey, this awesome. ba basketball. He does it all. Oh, God. Ice skating. Are you, a, are you a sports fan, David? Do you enjoy sports? I enjoy basketball. Is the only sport that I follow on any kind of in any kind of competent way. But I'm pretty bad. I'm pretty bad at sports. I'm too busy looking into weird stories to to get into sport too much. Uh, in your travels, have you encountered any weird sports? Um, probably like competitive frisbee was pretty odd. Of course, competitive tickling probably takes the cake for everything. That was probably yeah. the weirdest sport I've ever covered. I wonder from. if there's an Arliss episode that covers tickling, or if that would be the reboot would finally <laughs> get to cover that angle. Yes. I really want someone to oh, write like a narrative that, treatment of tickled. That would that would blow my mind because I'm always. I God just had a I just had a narrative a uh, narrative. Uh, uh, inspiration a merchandising piece of inspiration uh why not make a tickle me arliss doll to tie in with uh the baby arliss show yeah. uh, wow you've always got good ideas george always <laughs> always good always you ha they have to be good now david how um, would how would you frame the uh tickled narrative movie would it be about you guys looking for it or no, like so I'd, I'd cut myself out of the narrative yeah. completely i don't think to be any journalist oh. i think it would either be from david damato's perspective like the tickle king and running his tickle empire or maybe like a fresh-faced kind of ryan gosling-esque college student who sure. um you know he's starting out he suddenly meets this like beautiful babe on the 90s internet yeah. who starts um requesting tickles in this real sort of a catfishing thing yeah. But then just the empire just extends into every part of American life, you know. So the student, through the student's eyes, you're kind of stumbling through this craziness. 
Yeah. And eventually, I think it had to kind of extrapolate the ending to some sort of showdown between David D'Amato and the college student, maybe some sort like of. A some sort of you're saying when you say showdown, you mean like a gunfight or a lightsaber battle or some kind of. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking lightsaber battle, something like that. It needs to have that conflict that we never yeah. quite had in the documentary. It just needs to go up a notch. So maybe, why do a narrative unless you can like spin the facts a little bit? You know. So yeah. maybe maybe it turns out that David D'Amato is his father. That here's this young, mm. sort of bright-eyed, blonde boy, mm. and he gets dragged yeah. into this whole larger universe, and he becomes afraid of this man, and then realizes that in fact this man is his father, and they have to fight with the light source. I love it. I love it. That's exactly what needs to happen, actually. That's good. I'm so down for that. Uh, oh. I'll say this: under twenty-five dollars away from thirty-two hundred dollars. Wow. And let's God. say also on screen right thing. now, Blake Clark, he of the Happy Madison films, and Slinky Dog in the last two oh. Toy Story movies. Last, like, three, last three Toy Story movies. No, no. Jim Varney was still alive. Jim Varney too? Oh, okay. He passed short. Don't test Waddle on Toy Story. Yeah, I don't know why I did that. This is, and the, wait a second. This character's name. Ernest. No. Slinky. No. Blake. No. Uh, Clark, no. Woody, Buzz. No, no, no. This is the point I was going to make. Okay. Blake Clark turned around playing this caddy character, and yep. his name written on the back of his vest was Griff, which is a name that means nothing yeah. to me. No, nothing to you. I just thought <laughs> people should know. A non sequitur. It's huh. a non sequitur. It's that kind of rando humor that the kids love. Yeah. Shall we shall we give David an Arliss name? I would love nothing more. Yeah. And I'm already seeing a lot of possibilities in here. <laughs> oh, I definitely I I, I definitely see some possibilities for an Arliss. Possibilities. Name here. Okay. How long did the show run for? How many seasons? Seven seasons. Seven seasons. My God, you guys have got such a journey in front of you. I know. We're only three in. Oh, it's no, it's. Okay. All right. All right. So, so I think right off the bat, let's throw an so first of all, L, L after the two R's, inferior. An L, oh, an L after the, okay. Yeah, two R's, yeah. L, I. And then let's throw two dollar signs in there. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Get rid of that second I. I don't know what that yeah, I is doing there. That. We don't need that. Okay, it's quite something, isn't it? Um, yeah, let's put a couple of dongs in the in the David. Let's yeah. bookend that David with two dong signs. Yeah, let's dong it, baby. <laughs> let's double dong that David uh, <laughs> dong that at David. the front and the back. And here's another thing. No, no, not like that. No, no, not two. One at the front, one at the back. Let's not get crazy. Don't mess it up. Don't mess I, it up. I understand. And and the R at the end of far lesser. Yeah. <laughs> Place it's that so with, irritating. Let's it's such an that, irritating style to watch. Let's replace that with the the uh, the trademark. I hate, I hate it so much. <laughs> to use that one, the trademark. Yeah. Yes. I'll also say this. Someone pointed out to me after the stream, T M Boatman. There's a T M oh. in Boatman. Oh. You can do it. Okay. Anyways. Next time. We'll give. We'll make sure to give Michael Boatman an Arliss name next time he's back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what else? A v. Uh, let's do the the Flebo, the Fle the F. Let's get that Flebo sign right yeah. there. Don't we have an F down there? We have a Frank. Oh, or let's try the Florin. Let's try the Florin. Okay. The Florin. That's, that's fancy. Elegant. I like it. It's elegant. Ooh. And, and right. Ooh. Uh, let's let's replace a... the V with the martini glass. Yeah. Yeah. Because our list is about work and play. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, now, put an Austral for that first so day. Much. I mean, I'm on yeah. it. You're doing this for me, but I also hate it. It's okay to be. You, it, it's a complicated thing, but it's okay to hate something and be tremendously honored by it as well. Yes. Some people think I those mean, are you contradictory about, impulses. The, the, you're right, George. I mean, you may have talked about this already, but I wonder how. Obviously, the show survived for quite a long time, but I wonder if the reason it hasn't found like a large, large fan base was because of the name. You know, just finding this thing. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, how do you even say um, it? I mean, when you told me about this and invited me on onto the screen, I was about. just puzzled by like what the hell you were talking about. Yeah, yeah you. A lot of people probably think it's that the show. A lot of people think the show is called Arley Double Dollar Sign or I Arley Double this, Dollar. I thought this was called Arley Arley Money Money. Arley or money. Arley Two Bucks. Arley Two Bucks. I'm gonna update my. If you can send that through to me, I'll update my Twitter name. Is that? Um, oh, great. oh, that's so horrible. Can yeah. I? Yep. Can I say something? Can I say something? I've had um, for for charity today. I have eaten uh, seven sugar-free Jellos, mm. uh, and one interesting. And I don't think that they advertise this, but uh, if you eat. Sugar-free Jello very quickly. It will make your mustache uh, more youthful. Wow! <laughs> I don't know if you can notice right. because I am a gray-haired man, and yet if you eat seven sugar-free uh, Jellos, uh, your mustache will suddenly uh, not be as gray. Now, guys, I'm gonna put how much we're up to. Okay. Ah. Hang on one sec. Make sure this is the right number. Great. Boom. You guys are doing God's work, by the way. It's so good. Thank you. We are now confirmed July, July 5th. 1600. Mark your calendars we for July 5th. Back. Independence Day weekend. Yes. Uh, now we have something to look forward to that weekend. The 1600 pen charity watchathon. On yep. July 5th, we celebrate our independence. <laughs> oh, uh, Dave Allen Gruber is uh, shown up here on the okay. show. No, wait a second. What is the next goal we have set? Was that was that Judy Gold also? It is. This episode stacked. I, I think yes. Uh, the next goal we have is four thousand dollars. I have to unpackage this John Ratzenberger action figure with my feet. That's almost some tickled shit, right? There. <laughs> That's pretty close to being out of David's movie, yeah. Okay, and right. then so I think we need oh. to set a goal. For, <laughs> oh, he's back. We need, we need to set the goal. For I thought you'd offended him. I thought you'd offended David. I think we should. That's not what my movie is like at all. No, I think you're very angry. Did you need to get closer to your Wi-Fi? Sorry about that. Uh, New Zealand, we struggle with okay. the internet down here. We need to set a goal for thirty-five. We need to to mind that gap, being loose style. If we're talking okay. about documentary. So what's a good goal? David, what do you think is a good goal for $3,500? We want to get people to donate. I think, um, man, I mean, maybe I need to go and get that Jar Jar figure and give that to someone. How far are you from the store? Well, the trouble is it's actually, it's a public holiday here and I'm at shut. That's not a good idea. Oh, no. Um, I'm but, so sorry. But, but perhaps, okay. wait, but perhaps there is some way to incentivize that you would buy it, sign it, and send it to a person who donated a certain amount. Oh, that's a good idea. I just, uh, I hope it's all there. This was like a week ago. Rebellions were built I'm on worried. Hope, I'm just worried about making a promise to not being able to fill it. Yeah, it's true. It's this, true. this is truly a new hope that that Jar Jar Binks is still there. <laughs> well, this it, it might for I mean who knows someone could have hoped something else in the past 10 seconds but that might be the newest hope there is the one that we just had just now I hope that that Jar Jar Binks is still there uh, uh, David uh, George and I of course uh, good old friends with the filmmaker Ron Howard uh, yes. who directed Willow and so a Solo a Star Wars movie mm -hmm. uh, now he will text from time to time during the show uh, because George cannot respond to his text because he refuses to own a laptop and thus does all of these streams from his phone. And he said, George Lucas has to go to McKamey Manor, ask David <laughs> about it. Yeah, that's what David was talking about earlier. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Obviously, McKamey Ron wasn't Manor. watching the stream earlier. Uh, you know, he wasn't, no. And I mean, you can, I mean, I, I do have a hookup with Russ. We're each other's Facebook friends. So I'm I'm Facebook friends with the main torturer. So maybe I could I could get you in there, George, if you um, if you want to be tortured for a couple of days. 
what's the goal for that, George? How much how much would it cost you to go to McKinney Manor? Let's say half a million dollars. <laughs> Wait, so it's, it's less for you to go there than it would be for Gether to come do a new episode of his podcast. A new Busy Boys, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, we're asking a lot of Gether, yeah. either flat water or bubbled milk. That's a big ask. Okay, okay. I'll put that in there, uh, George. I mean, yeah. I don't know if this helps, and I don't know. But if that's you know today. Cares, but, that's uh, but I'm, that's I'm, today. I'm, I'm happy. If anyone wants my email address, do I have a direct question line for anything to do with Ticket or Dark Tourist? I'm happy to give my email address out to someone. If that, um, I'm not saying that's a big incentive, but if it like lets someone donate okay. like ten bucks or something, I'm down. Oh, I, I also, Patrick, I'm about to send you something. Okay. Oh gosh. Oh. David, are you ticklish? Um, I'm very ticklish, yes. All right. I hope you're not, a, uh, you're, you're probably a fetishist, George, in your spare time. Nope. That's a very, very nope. question before. Nope. You've never heard that question before? No, a lot of, the, usually the people out seeing have a very big tickle fetish, which is fine. I'm not, I'm not kink shaming. Oh, no. But, uh, no. I, I prefer not to be tickle uh, attached. David, our fans work very fast. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is canon. Wins. That is canon. We're gonna die. Oh, that's so die. funny. And their tongues are tight. I love that. Do we know who drew this? Do we want to say? Yes. Uh, drew give this. A moment here. I had it. Hold on. Oh my uh, gosh. A Eamon Doherty, the great Eamon oh, Doherty. The great Eamon Doherty. Great. The great that's so great. Eamon Doherty. Look at, look at that little alien, really alien mouse head. It is <laughs> so funny. Oh, that is great. Yeah. That's um, so quick as well. My goodness. Yeah. yeah the well, coloring is so fast. Oh, David, what's um, your favorite TV show, David? My favorite what show, sorry? TV show. Oh, hands down, it's, um, I mean, apart from some of the, the, the Star Wars um, related TV shows, it would mm -hmm. have to be The Leftovers. I, I'm obsessed with that show. Also on HBO. Awesome. Yeah. Um, yes. And it HBO Max. physically annoys me how people refuse to watch that show because it's, it's that one shows of the perfect show. Uh, I'll say yeah. I finished it two weeks ago. I'd never seen it, and I watched it two weeks ago. It's such a bleak. It, I love how seriously it takes itself. It's just so full of dread and seriousness. It has huge yeah. moments later on, but like that first season is a real slog, and I love it for that. Oh, David, I, I mean, if you I, love I think that show, I, you should come yeah. visit America right away because. Uh, <laughs> We have a very large percent yeah. of our population suddenly disappearing. <laughs> yeah, oh, God. America yeah. is now, you know, people people were very excited to go to Star Wars Galaxy's End, uh, Galaxy's Edge for the, to have the, to, oh, we're in a Star Wars movie, but yes. America is basically a giant leftover theme park experience It pretty much now. is, yes. It's, and, it's, New Zealand, yeah. and New Zealand is miracle. It's <laughs> true. Ooh. A place where nothing was affected, just somehow we yeah. got past it all. Yeah, but yeah. Now, I, I love that show so much, and I think it has the you know it's only three seasons, it's really contained, and the finale for a show that's so big and has such big questions is just so intimate and tiny, and it's just based almost around this conversation between two people, and it just wonderful wraps up musical the show. score, wonderful musical score oh, by Max Richter. God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm also watching a lot of um, the American, the FX, uh, What We Do in the Shadows, which is an extension of Taika, Taika's uh, film um, about sort of what, you know, vampires and fighting together and what life is like for them. And I love that show. It's so good. I don't know. Are people watching that over there on FX? It's so, so good. George, do you know who was on a few weeks ago? Uh, yes. Uh, Mark Hamill was on. Luke Skywalker Everybody himself. Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a good show. Um, now, do we did we set it? Did we set an amount goal for a person to donate to get a signed Jar Jar Binks? Uh, uh, doll, we did. A, a we figurine? did. We weren't sure if it was going to still be there. But oh, so we don't know. We don't know. We can't promise it. Yeah, that's the only problem. I just I I hate to promise it and not deliver. Like it was there a yeah. week ago. How long does a Jar Jar stay in a store? I don't know. It would be so great if you could write Misa Ticklish on the. Box. I'll say this. If David, and this is no pressure on David, if he happens to walk by the store later on and sees it, we can always yeah. do it another week. That's yeah. very true. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's true. What I can, uh, I, can um, I only I'm actually going to, um, to a protest can, for for um, a sort of a Black Lives Matter protest we're doing here in New Zealand. So yeah. I walk past that place on the way. So great. I can let you know in a couple of hours if it's there or not. Yeah. Great. We'll figure it great. out. Yes. Uh, and and uh, fortunately, I think there's still going to be a uh, reason to raise money for charity after today. Yeah. Yeah. That's got, the good news. I got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> cool. Oh. Uh, now, that, this you know, it's not just a, it, it's not just a Star Wars uh, Lucasfilm joke anymore. It feels like they should put it on the American flag. And they really should. We got. We're gonna up the happiness factor right here. The episode that we're watching is the one that they talked about last week. It's the Arliss falls in love episode. Oh, it's vacation time for yeah. Jim and Michael. D David, last week uh, we had three of the cast members from our list. Three of the main cast members were on the stream. We got three out of four. Three out of four. That was incredible. That, that, what a special moment. And they said that every season there was always one episode where it was our list falls in love. And they would be able to take that week off a little bit because it was such a heavy Robert Wool lift. But they were good. It's great. Uh, right? so Sandro didn't get to take this week off, though. She's still yeah. there. She's, She's got a healthy, healthy B plot in this episode. It seems. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Someone asked oh. in the comments, "What was Jar Jar like to work with?" We got along so well. I mean, we got along oh, famously. Dream. We really. I mean, we felt very confident that we were going to come out of that and be able to sort of set up shop as the new. Uh, you know, uh, a, a prior in Wilder, you mm -hmm. know? I have to confess, when I, because uh, David, when I first saw your film, I uh, I hadn't read anything about it in advance, and I heard it's a documentary called Tickled, and people were really liking it, and I thought, is this a documentary about me during every single scene that we were filming with Jar Jar Binks? Because that's what it sounds like. He was tickled. I, I was stunned. I was stunned when I realized what it was actually about because I thought it must be about that because that describes how I was every was, I, every I, take. First hand account, he was tickled pink. Truly. <laughs> you just described something that I would love to document. I wish I was there. I wish I was there to, to film that. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, that, that would have uh, that would have been great. But you know, that's now as a, you know, Making narrative films, you can go back and change them until you sell them to yeah. Disney. Uh, with a documentary, you can update, but you if you miss something, it's happened. Mm -hmm. um, you're you're very much. You, uh, is that a real? Do you is that an anxiety that sticks with you? Uh, are there things that got away from you that you can't let go of the, the that feeling? Yeah, absolutely. There's definitely moments. I mean, the 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 beginning of Tickle, the first ten minutes, is all kind of stuff that had already happened before we'd started recording. So we got around that by sort of doing some recreations, but you never want to be in that territory, I don't think, but you want to be recording from the get go. In a way though, right. I like it because it's create creatively, it's it's restricting in a way where you don't obsess over all the different things you can do. Like you, George, you've got a million ways you could shoot a thing. Whereas I get one go, and if I mess it up, that's what I'm stuck with. And that could be good in a way because um, it takes the stress off because you're, you're just stuck with what you've got, and that's fine. Whereas the possibilities for you, George, and I, I know you know you, you like going back to some of your films um, you've already made and add elements to it and change things, you know, decades yeah. on. And so that's you a can take world you can order. take you can take the mouth from one take and put it on the face of another take and put the arms from a third take and it still looks like the best acting you, it's like it's as good as any acting you'll see in a movie where they do it all in one take it, you can't tell the difference yeah and I, and I wish i could use that style in a documentary but the trouble is once you start removing arms and putting them on other people and taking faces and putting them on other people's heads you start to mm -hmm. run and you know people complain about things being inaccurate and and, and ethical people talk about the ethics of it right yeah, they do. So, I mean, you can get away with that and no one minds. I mean, people em embrace it, uh, what you do. But with me, I just can't do that. Did you ever see Paul Kotze? Uh, no, I didn't. Did you see Koyana Skotze? No, I haven't. Sorry, no. The, the, no. It's the, the, the Kotze trilogy. I think. Uh, I'll send you the, the Blu-rays of it. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's on Criterion. Criterion, yeah. 
Philip Glass Thank scores. You. you can get side yeah. notes. That would be good as well. I'll <laughs> sign them from George Lucas to you. Yeah. Now, David, <laughs> Thanks, George. David, right now, and this is very real, uh, some documentary filmmakers are making a documentary on the George Lucas talk show. Yes. How sure. should we? How should we end a documentary? Well, this is like, David, you were talking about sometimes you stumble into a different story than you thought you were telling, right? Mm -hmm. These documentary mm -hmm. filmmakers thought they were doing a little documentary about mm -hmm. one show at a very prominent New York comedy theater. And instead, it seems like they have stumbled into a documentary about that theater closing down. <laughs> yeah, it's, that, I mean, that you already have your... Um, your big turning point of suddenly things becoming very dark and very unknown and, you know, the they dark night they, of the soul, they, isn't it? They thought they were almost done filming. They thought <laughs> we're pretty much maybe one final talking head interview and we're done. And then the theater closed down and now we're every week going live for six hours to raise money. Yeah, little did they know that that documentary hadn't fire. even started yet. Hadn't they even didn't even started. know that. No. And now it's, it's a documentary though. about Marlis. That's now the craziest thing. Now it's a documentary about Arliss. We <laughs> might not even four. get above the title in this thing anymore. <laughs> well, four hours into the documentary, and it just begins its real journey of being about the background of Alice. Yeah. <laughs> we might we might actually be sort of like the loss leader for them finding the real dot. We might not even make the final cut. <laughs> <laughs> Devastating all. years of shooting all and chopped all. in the they, building. They literally filmed at least 12 live shows, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We yeah. might not make I think it. Was, yeah. I think it might end up being a prequel to a bigger documentary about so. everything falling apart. It's going to be like Adrian Brody in The Thin Red Line, where he goes to the premiere with his parents and he's like, I'm the lead. And it's like, you got one line. <laughs> you got the one line. Uh, <laughs> Oh boy! Another our no, team. I've, I think I've got to leave because this episode's going down, and I've got to go to the yeah. protest down the road, and I've got to find if there's a Jar Jar Binks doll. Well, great luck with that, and stay in touch with Patrick so we know that uh, if that toy does exist, it might be an incentive for the next week. Oh, well, and I just yes. like to thank. I, I think it's amazing what you're doing, and it's an honor to be to, to talk to you, George. I've been a fan for a long time, um, and so I'm a fan of all of yours. But George is just. Thank you. Thank it's, you. Uh, well, it's you an know, honor. It's an honor to speak um, with well. you, David. I also I want to say I love the way we, before when you casually mentioned the name Arliss, I think the title sounds great in your accent. Your oh, the, the, in the New Zealand vernacular, yeah, Arliss. Yeah, Arliss. yeah I know. I do say some words in the usual way, Arliss. It's elegant. It sounds. Um, it sounds beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. And Can I appreciate you, my no. new name you've given me as well. My new Arliss name. Oh, you're welcome. Can we yeah. just get David before? Yeah, you, can we get one clean read of you saying Arliss in your accent? One, just a How about this? Read. And if you could say uh, previously on Baby Arliss. Yes, a, mm. act, yes, and give us an alt. <laughs> one time. Previously. Okay, yes. Previously on Baby Arliss. Previously on Baby Arliss. And previously. Wado, stop talking. I'm, sorry, I'm trying to get it clean. I'm trying to get it clean. <laughs> we get a clean one. Stop talking. I mean, I'm also just want to say Wado. I'm going to mute Wado. Previously on Baby Alice. Previously on Baby Alice. How does that work for you? One more. One more. Now, now a couple where you just say Baby Alice. Just the title. Uh, this is Baby, Baby, Baby Alice. This is Baby Alice. This is Baby Alice. This is Baby Arliss. Baby Arliss. Baby Arliss. That's great. And let's get as an all right. just one time previously on Baby Carless. Because he also is half car. Previously on Baby Carless. We got it. Okay, that's our select. Thank you, David. Your direction is Thank what you so much, David. Is next to none. It's, it's a pleasure to be Thank directed you. by you. Um, Thank you. I look hey, I love and George. My God, and Patrick, what a honor, all of you. My God. Thank you, David. It was good seeing you. Thank you. Much love. Talk to you guys soon. See ya. Bye. The all right, I gotta get some <laughs> illumination in here. Okay. One better. I Make sure I put those on. Now, I just want to yeah. say, Patrick, so this is, we're about to start episode 13, the final episode of this season. The final episode.
I want to reestablish. Where are we at right now in terms of donations? We are at, I believe, the same spot we were at a minute ago when I said that other time. Oh, hang on. Um, Come on. Come on. Come in. Come in. We got some in. Yeah, we're still at the same spot, which is 33. 32569. Wow. Okay. Now we want to let's remind people. The goals, the most immediate goals, did we set one for three thousand five hundred? Uh, we set one for four thousand, right? Four thousand, yeah. And four twenty is me. I I will I will drink ice cream without a spoon. Yeah, yeah. And four 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 is deflate the BB eight. Now yeah. I know we're a little bit far away, but we love to hit these. We you love. Know, We'd love to hit these, and and, and 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 one way that I think we should maybe emphasize I'm this. Sorry, we're is at it's, it's, we're at yeah. three three two five five sixty nine. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. So do we do we have a goal for thirty five? Do we have a goal for four? We have our goal for four is the oh, action no, the, foot. the action figure with the foot. Okay, so four is the action figure. Yeah. Four four twenty is the ice cream. Four 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 four. four. What? Hang on, let's talk about this with our next guest. Okay, guys, you know. We have a guest. Yeah, you know him and you love him. <laughs> Bobby! Oh, Bobby! Oh man! You know, no, no, it's I should be doing that to you. Oh, I, mean, Bobby. I mean, no, no. No, you, it's, Bobby. It, it's uh, I, I appreciate it that I uh, if we do for raising money. It's great. No, it's great. Yeah. Thank you. It makes, yeah. and I have to watch them because if I'm going to talk about them, I got to remember. Bobby, we gotta say you haven't been kidding. This season, you get a lot heavier. You get a lot darker. You go into deeper subjects. Oh, it's gonna get better. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm saying in a good no, way. No. You've been telling us as the show progressed. Well, it, it, we start, Season three is yes. where we started to find. It feels like a turning you know, story. Yes, tone. yes so you're nice. unlocking some new doors here. Yeah, and that goes for you know tone. It yeah. goes for direction. It goes for mm -hmm. performances. What you can have people do now. At the same time, you have to hold on to your base. Yes, you, you know you, yeah. you don't want to get to a place where I lost too many people. Yeah. Plus, I'm you know, relying more on Sandra a bit. Well, Bobby, and, you said you grew every season. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. Actually, and this is where it starts. Season four starts off really strong. There was a couple episodes I kind of liked in season three a lot. Um, do you know the one with oh, the yeah. gangster doll and the, and the guy? Who's yeah, the little penny there? episode. Yes. Well, what's weird about that show? That's the one we talked about last week. Yeah. Was playing the basketball player who was in two episodes. Uh, he played the basketball player in that episode with the, with the uh, trash tea doll, yeah. and he also played the basketball player in the episode where Rita he was knocking up all these women, and Rita had a sure. take care of one of the women. Yeah, uh, yeah. He was a regular Michael Jace, good actor, and he was a regular on the Shield for many years. And he was involved in an incident where, unfortunately, uh, he shot his girlfriend and died. She died, and he was convicted of like second degree murder. He's serving a twenty to life. So wait, and the other guy in the movie who played his gangster brother, yeah, who, who, who hijacks me, he two years after we shot this, he was. Shot by the police in an accident oh, wow. at a Halloween party, and so both those guys. It's wow, wow. When I saw that, it's like, ooh, that's kind of weird. I mean, yeah. uh, yeah. it was most nice to see is all the people, the good actors and, and cameos we were starting to get. Oh, you got yeah. some people. Kenneth Marr, Shelley Berman. Yeah, he was great. They were yeah. all great. Oh. Kenny Mars. I mean, uh, uh, I told uh, you. Nick, Nick back then was terrific. To, uh, Uh, Michael Clark Duncan. Oh, Mickey D. Oh, Julie White. The last episode, the right. winning author. Yes. Love you know, she's a Tony Award-winning actress. Yeah, I mean, these, these people uh, are good. Blake yes. Clark. We we're talking. We we're singing the praises of Blake Clark, the caddy in the last. Blake episode. is a yeah. full comic friend of mine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. really. Yeah. 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 Judy Gold, another great stand-up. She was in the yeah. pilot. I've known Judy yeah. for uh, 120 years, and yeah. uh, uh, and. Uh, 
And you know, we should we started the clubs together. Yeah. Yeah. So I love Judy. Boy, do I love Judy. It's great. Here, we should start. Yeah. Let's start this last episode so we okay. can. Uh, all right, you ready? One, two, three. Now, this episode is um, if you're familiar with the show Real Sports with Brian Gumble on HBO. Yes. Well, because I was on HBO, I wanted to use everything I could. So this is uh, it was actually this was actually based on a story that had happened between Gary Shandling and Brad Gray. Oh, where right. Brad Gray, oh, right. Gary sued Brad. It was really ugly. Yeah. yeah. After the share during the Santa show, you, you Brad sued Gary. Right. Well, because you know, Gary sued Brad. Right. Because he was poaching all his clients. And exactly. He was, and it got up. So this played on that. Like I said, we always change the sport. We always change. Yeah. The, but uh, this plays all over that. Right. And, and again, it's another thing where Arnold's is full of shit talking, like in the book. And then uh, and you see what happened. Yeah. Wasn't the thing it was uh, Brad Gray was taking writers from the Larry Sanders show and then setting them up with their own TV shows, poaching. And he was double dipping. Right, right. And then once once Gary sued Brad, Brad then I think sued Gary for something else. I believe there were two lawsuits simultaneously yeah. of both directions. Yeah. Well, ultimately, they settled, uh, yeah. but it was, you know, it's a pretty shitty. Did you did it's you know Gary? Know them both. Know them both. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. What are you gonna do? It's yeah. also fascinating to know because so much of the final season of the Larry Sanders show was inspired by that, and then the fact that uh, that you're also uh, uh, using that as an inspiration for this is very yeah. fascinating. Right. Yeah. I mean, you're, well, your network mates. Yes. Yeah, I, I, you know, unless you know that, I don't know. Yeah. If, you know, Twenty years yeah. after the fact, it wouldn't make much difference. But the show, held, but the storyline held up by itself. You yeah. know, without knowing it. And this episode is is sort of mockumentary yeah. style. This, yeah. episode, as you were yeah. saying, is sort of in the style of real sports. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Except we go in and out of it, as you see. Now, there's a, there's a clip in here. A couple of. Yeah. Yeah. Cameron Crowe, right there, isn't that Cameron Crowe? Yes. Cameron. Cam yeah. and I used to play softball together when I first got out here. Really? He was on a team called the Thugs, and I was on the Hollywood Knights. Huh. Well, of course you were on the Hollywood Knights. Was yeah. that was that team with other people from the film Hollywood Knights? Yes, yeah, some of them. Some of them, yeah. Wow. wow. Now, when you shoot an episode like this, is the crew this the same? But this is Ron Sheldon here on screen, right? Yeah. But I was gonna ask, is the, is your crew the same for shooting this kind of episode, or is it a different crew that you bring in since it's a different style? No, no. Yeah. Okay. And we might have got. I don't know if we did get any anything to shoot that they shot in New York and sent to us. I don't think so. I think everything was right there. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Patrick, you have a question. Uh, you I, I love the I love the joke of having the. Go ahead. I love the joke of seeing the boulder and poster in the background. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, were you saying why? No, Patrick, you had a question you wanted to ask Bobby earlier when we were oh. in the opening uh, credit sequence. Yeah, I don't remember if this was like this the last two seasons, but it uh, the opening credits end with you on the field at Yankee Stadium. Yes. How did you, how did you guys do that? Like, did you just go before a game and you shot yeah. it? <laughs> yes. That's exciting. It was very cool being on Yankees. I've actually played on Yankee Stadium field years ago. Oh, and, the, and when I played softball there, I remember, because I usually played first base, but a guy immediately bullied bullied everybody out of there to play first base, and his name was Donald Trump. No! Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That may have been the first time I met him. Maybe. Wow. First time. Wow. Art of the steel. <laughs> Okay, Bobby, as you know, we're raising money for a very important cause today. Absolutely. For the National Bailout Fund. Now, we seem to have stalled a little bit in raising. So we want to set a new goal. As you know, we'll set the immediate goal so that if we hit this amount, this will happen. So where are we at right now, Patrick? Right now, we're at $3,305.69. Now, we got Bobby. I want to I want to make this count. I want to say, let's set a goal for 3750 Okay. Okay, we want we want something to boost this four hundred dollars. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what will what will happen? What will do that? That's that's what we got to brainstorm. Yeah, here. Yeah. Great, the greatest greatest creative minds in Hollywood, Lucas Wool and Watto. We have yeah. to come up with it's something. Fine. What does the audience want to see? So I'm okay. Thanks for including me, though. It's the story of the greatest. You're good. Come on. Okay. We're legends here. I'm trying to think what I could. Do. 
you know, what kind of piece of schlock here do I could sell? Oh, you know, I'm trying to think. So, do I have any? Uh, you don't I, own any pets, do you, Robert? No, <laughs> and, it's kind of, and it's kind of cheesy to sell the awards people give you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at one now you from could, uh, from it was a charity thing for the National Alzheimer's and stuff. I can't do that. <laughs> if I went to Alzheimer's, I'd say, "Hey, I forgot I had it." <laughs> no, but I like this idea. We, I mean, we were talking about this with our last guest. Is there like an item where we say, if you donate this amount, the first person to donate this amount gets this? You know, we're looking for a larger impact donation. Yeah, yeah, no, I get this it. Is a, this is a great opportunity. To find something in your room that doesn't spark joy. <laughs> <laughs> so you can declutter. You can declutter. Someone else, it will spark joy in them, and it's for a good cause. So it's it's a triple win. Yeah, take a, take a lap around the room, Bobby. Take like, a lap. Because this is going to be competitive. This is the first this person is great. to pledge $400. <laughs> Oh what is this? What is this? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Robert. 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 That's, that's so the centerpiece expensive. of the room. That's so expensive to mail, though. Robert. No, oh you, my can't, goodness. you can't do that, you Robert. You can't. Robert! No, Robert, that's a treasure. Keep that. Keep that. No. No. <laughs> Oh, no, it finds something small that you don't want anymore. No, but it has to also be a high value. Well, I had, I had, I had been in a quarter for a very long time. It was, it was signed by everyone, so it's at oh. least 25 years old. 25 yeah, keep years. that. Don't get rid of that. Um, no, okay. don't do that. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> by the way, you know who else was good in this series? Um, in the one with the African basketball play, the Prince and the Long Island the wedding, yeah, the uh, the uh, the the dental hygienist was played by Jennifer Crystal, who was Billy Crystal's daughter. Oh, very good. Yes, yes, very, yeah. very good. Yeah. You can tell she knew where the jokes were. You know, yeah, that's, yeah. Also, that's the episode where Kirby gets a boner. Yeah, that did crack me up. I have to tell you, I know it's a no, good joke, but it made no, me. This is what I want to ask. Nope. This is what I want to ask. Yes. So George obviously pioneered a lot in the field of special effects. Right. Was that bone How did you do it? Was it method? How did you well, do it? You know, <laughs> I don't know. The next year, Turner didn't leave. The Turner screwed up. He was going to come on. Um, yeah. I don't know. We got to ask him that. I forgot how. It's got to be some kind of. Uh, it looked like some sort of hydraulic. Like, like, like or, else, or else Jimbo's packing. Yeah, you know, Jimbo, packet is not the word. <laughs> um, I, I, don't know. The fact, I don't know. I don't know. I the fact, the the fact that you don't remember movie. means that you 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 nailed it. It was not a stressful event. It wasn't like the shark and jaws no. where <laughs> it wouldn't work and it was take after take and you're losing the light. Is I, it possible that Jim Turner did it in one take? <laughs> I, I knew it had to be turned on because it had to expand in that one yeah. shot. So That's I don't know like, if it, it had some it kind of inflatable yeah. something, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, it must uh, have been a practical effect. 1998. Yeah. And, and, you know, and you know what else I realized as it was going on again, you know, as you're working and finding out what works, yeah. is Robert Tortorese, our costume designer, was just great with Rita. I oh, mean, we had her in outfits oh. that were just great. I mean, every guest we have to come on point that out, truly. Every yeah, guest has also, wow. also yeah. at this time, Sex in the City starts to come on the air. Yeah. So I'm trying to hold on to as much of that audience. Yeah. You know, because I'm following her. And so I have to follow, you know, it's like I've got to hold on as much that female audience as I possibly can. So um, so that that to me was very conscious about. You know about you know expanding her part and her look and and let her and being stylized. You know it's like we can do it. You know great thing about being on HBO is you did it. I never caught any shit for anything. It yeah. also it just feels like uh, uh, Rita's fashion gets more and more impressive by every episode. Well, it's she part. gets more and more impressive well, too. Yes, I mean, great actress. yes, but it also is you're pushing it in different directions as well. I mean, the, taking risks with her hairstyle, her makeup, her outfits, and then also her character. Her yeah, I mean, like in the, I think it's, in, in yeah. the is the one where she has to talk the girl who's yes. pregnant. It, right. That scene with her and the girl at the diner. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. That's yeah. real good stuff. Yeah. That's real, I mean, that's not that is not how Arla started. 
Let's put it there. No. no, but that's what I'm seeing. We're, we're, we've grown far yeah. from the, the rookie season. Yeah, and again, you'd find yourself, and, and then next the next week is where it starts to really, I would say you got a good, first of all, it's only 12 episodes or 11 yeah. episodes, which is good for you. Right. <laughs> um, but I, th- I think at least at least half of them are really good shows, I think. Mm. You know, and we have more great guest stars. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know when James Coburn comes on and Ed Asner and Charles. I, I Coburn and Klaus. And yeah. we get some good people coming on. Um, Eileen uh, Brennan. Oh. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, Kathleen Freeman. I think Kathleen Freeman is maybe next year, next season. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she plays Marge Shot. Marge Shot character. Which, it's a nice episode. Um, okay, Bobby. Can we find something in the room? We don't want to make you give up. The oh, hold on. let me see. That feels like too big of an item. Well, let's well, find it's going to bring. How much are we trying to get? We're trying to get four hundred dollars now. If there's, but a don't think about it in those terms because because no. the fact I, that it's yours right. adds to the value of it immediately. And we've maybe, also raised. Hey, Wado, we've also raised sixty-five dollars since you said that. So. Okay, yeah. I still, I'd like to find an item that is maybe two hundred dollars. I feel like that's. I would say in the same way, in the same way that you know they say when you buy a car, a new car, the second you drive it off the lot, yes. it decreases, it depreciates in value. No. I'd say oh. that any item in that room, okay. just by being owned by Robert. Oh okay. my gosh! Yeah. It's gonna be oh so expensive God. to mail that though, Robert. Um, without well, the, without you know, the frame. Here's the deals I look at it. It's, yeah. It's, if you know, if they're gonna pay that kind of money for it, let me find. You know, it's like to me, this is yeah. like it's the, it's the donation to the bank. You know, it's the food. Yes. Bank. Okay. So we you know, yeah. the photos and everything. So what's the difference, really? I mean, so what what amount do we want to settle on for this? You're going to sign it, Robert. I, I can't. I because it's in yeah. frame. Maybe we'll throw in a picture or something. We'll figure it I'll out. Do that. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, because really, we're. Uh, how could I do? I can't. It's all. I can't. Or you could you could sign the back. Yeah, you can sign the back, and it's just a secret. It's a secret. Sign the back. That's what I could do. Yeah. Because uh, do? then someone could hang it up in their house, and for for casual guests, they would yeah. just see the poster. But it every now and they'll say like, patient. "Check this out," and they would right. show them the back. Yes. That's yeah. like a special thing. I, I do that. You know what I do? You know what I'll do? I'll sign a picture. And maybe they'll okay. you know, put it on down here or something like that. Or, or, yeah. they, or they could pass That's it their down. problem. Yes. Maybe they'll they, figure that out. Maybe they put the picture over your face on the poster. <laughs> there you go. Creating a new work of art right. that is multi, multi-medium. Right. By the way, how much are we, what are we selling this thing for? That's what I'm saying. Let's let's name a price. What are we talking here? We want to raise well, What's the number you're looking for? We are at, let's see. Let me see where we're at right now. We are at. Hang on, it's going to take a sec to add this up. I want to get three thousand seven hundred and fifty. Okay. Boo, boo, boo. We are at four hundred twelve fifty plus twenty-five. We are at three four two zero sixty-nine. So let me. I'll figure out what that is. It's less than three hundred dollars. Should we say 300? Should we say 300 is the number? Sure. Yeah. Let's do it. Sure. Okay. And and the game here it is. Patrick will be refreshing. It is the first payment of $300 to show up. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Now, and I'll say this. I'll say this. Some people. No, there might be, because we don't want it. There could be a second person who just misses it by a hair. We'll find something for you. It won't be as good as this. But if you come in second place with another $300 donation, we'll find something. I might have another one. I mean, Bobby, you are so generous. This is It's okay. Hey, I appreciate you guys doing this. I mean, if it's bringing attention to... uh, to a show. You, by the way, it's on HBO Max. I didn't think we were on HBO Max. We're watching it on the map right now. On launch. You are on. On launch. Yes. Now, I will say, and I don't know about this, but assume the position is not on HBO Max. Yeah, that sucks. And I don't know. Yeah. But a lot of things, but neither are the Christopher Nolan Batman movies. So, yeah. uh, you know, they're, not everything is on at launch. So but maybe they're 
holding back some of their catalog. You no, know, I'll check on that too. The Burton Batman movies are, yeah. I think. Oh, so, yes, the Burton Batman. If you, because I when I was searching on HBO Max, I, the the quickest search was W U H L. Yes, and it brought up Batman and Arliss, but no assumed the position. I let's hope maybe the the residual structures are different on Max because you might be double dipping with Arliss and with Batman. I'm probably getting less. I get it's like, oh, no, I'm le- I guess less. And by you owe them money. Less. They they've worked out such a good deal. You have to send them a check. <laughs> hey, put it this way: the residuals I will get from Max. Yeah, we we'll pay for the poster if we sell. Oh. I, wait, I, yes. Patrick, there's they should a have called it HBO Min. Yes, minimum. Yeah, Min, that's, that's, that's better for this. Patrick, <laughs> there's a comment here I want to spotlight because I think yeah. it's very nice. Momentuary, do you see this one? No. Oh, yes, hang on. This is a nice one. This person says, Robert, I got to tell you while you're here, we watched three seasons of our list. I hate sports, but I love your show. Oh. This is what you talk about. It's about story. You want well, the show. Oh, well, yeah, but tell her thank you. And thank you for paying attention to the Leibowitz story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but but, I, but that was true. That's what happened. It gets better, too. Uh, for yeah. people who are it hey, gets better. We're loving it. I feel like it's growing every week. Well, yeah. that, that what also happens now in the fourth year is everything, you know, the opening changes, and you'll see different athletes up front. Really? And then you start to say, oh, there's Carl Malone, and there's yeah. Jeter, and there's Cy. So the and, and you're, you're getting closer to, you know, it goes from we're in at least 99. Yeah. 99. Mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, people are loving it. Uh, people love watching with us. It's been a lot of fun. Well, I appreciate I, it. We were ju- we just had, I love that this episode is in the documentary format. We just had uh, David Ferrier, uh, uh, the director of uh, Tickled. Yes. The documentary Tickled, which is also, I believe, on HBO. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, 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 I hope he watches this one because I would, when he comes back, if he comes back, I hope we can talk about this from the point of view of uh, a documentary that's in world, which I think is yeah. yes. fascinating. Uh, well, what's interesting about this episode is when I think you're past the point where Arliss first met the client when they were buying yeah. a property from the, the same deal. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. They, they had a mutual interest together. Well, when we had the cut, you saw the album cover of Jackson Brown's Running on Empty mm-hmm. as your clean, as they're cleaning the pot. Yeah. You had to get that cleared. Yeah. So, uh, first thing I asked was, they go, "What album?" You know, they they asked me creative. They said, "What out? Al- what album cover do you want to see?" And I said, "When well, I thought in 1998, I said uh, Bob Seger, Stranger in Town." Mm. So they try to clear it. It came back. Bob won't clear it. He's in rehab. Oh. <laughs> so yeah. then, so then I said, "Okay, Jackson Brown running on empty." And they said, "Jackson Brown clears nothing. Yeah. The only thing he's ever cleared." Was um was uh let me hold a second. was uh in Taxi Driver. He's got a song in Taxi. The only mm-hmm. thing ever clear. But it so happened that somebody who worked on the show, one girl, one woman, young woman, uh, was friendly with Jackson Brown, and oh. she asked him about it. He said, "Okay." And by the way, we actually used the song "Running on Empty" and the song "Cocaine" in this yeah. episode. But they were two of the pieces of music that are not in that I couldn't clear. Sure. Oh. They didn't want to pay for it. Someone in the chat is asking how you guys got Conan on the show. Yeah, Conan was on the show. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you gotta remember, I was a comic at this time. I was on all these shows. Yeah. So sure. I knew all the guys, and um, you know, they we, we you know, Conan. I met in New York. I had done a show in New York a couple of times. Did you uh, prefer doing panel to stand up, or when you became big enough to be? A guest, did you kind of miss being able to do the five on on these late night shows? Well, the, the panel's better because um, it's easier. You know, stand up's hard. Sure. <laughs> oh, no, I know, but I'm saying some and people. I, was a writer, so I really had to yeah. write, you know, it sure. Like, it was like writing one act plays. Yeah. Um, uh, no, the panel's easier, but I don't. It depends on uh, the. It depends where you are in your career too. Yeah. In the beginning, I was didn't know who I was as much. I'm like I'm on Merv Griffin. I'm more of a character. Mm-hmm. And um, but now I'd be different. And then again, then again, each audience is different too. Yeah. You, you know, the uh, Letterman audience was different. Like when I went on Bob Costas' later show, um, that's a whole different. But that's a there's no audience there. 
Do you yeah. have like a favorite show to do? Is there a show that was always your your favorite because of the host and the the audience and the vibe and whatever, where you felt like you really scored the most? Well, early on, Merv Griffin was such a fan and yeah. uh, and his audience, and I could pretty much do what, pretty much do what I wanted to do. And um, I, I'll tell you, it was weird. One time I was on a show, and I and the next guest was Roy Cohn. Remember who you know Roy Cohn? Oh, yes. I mean, Donald you know, Trump's, Donald mentor. Trump's mentor. Oh, mentor. Mentor. You know, yeah. Roy Cohn is not quite Hitler and Stalin, but he's just in the rung below there. He's he's right. Right. Yeah. He, he yeah. makes the list. Yes. Yeah, and this I mean, and he was the next guest because he was plugging a book. And I went up on the oh. couch next to him. And I gotta tell you, it was the creepiest. I can just I you know, talk about yeah. sports memory. I could feel the evil. Yeah. And the and the, and the, and the orange tan, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean that that was that was creepy. That was creepy. But I had, but I had a great time. I mean, I, I really think even I, I've been so fortunate. You know, I've been able to do stuff. Some I did better than others. Yeah. But I got to do a lot of stuff. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. You've had a great career. I mean, and and it's still great. But it is kind of the range of what you've been able to do is really really impressive. Well, I got that. Well, thank you. That's kind of I'm thinking watching you guys. I just think you guys are really funny. And I just, I'm just hey. happy. I, I, to be part of this thing is very cool. I think it's very cool. And I'm glad you're thinking of the show. I really oh, am. I'm loving it. Uh, Patrick, can we refresh? Has anyone come in with the donation? We have, we have not come in with the 300 yet. <laughs> okay. That's a big number, guys. That's a big oh, number. No. What's I the hardest number we got so far? What did you say? Should we kind of like, uh, uh, you know, kind of like bid on it and just see what the final bid is? That hey. way we, we get some money. We could do that. I mean, if people in the text want to start bidding numbers. Isn't that easier? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so people in the live chat, whoever wants to set the first bid. But let's yeah. say the, the starting bid, we have to go over $100 because yeah. that's – Right, twenty five. <laughs> that's what's going to cost me to mail it. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So a hundred is a starting bid. Sherbert and, will be and doing, also, we can't bid five dollars. We're starting at one hundred. <laughs> and also, let's think about you're not you're not just getting this poster. You're also helping someone out yes. who yeah. may have been at a protest yeah. and arrested by the police and can't afford bail. Yes, and they're going to have to maybe potentially go into a prison where people are sick. Yes, and this, this is a bonus. You're getting you're getting a bonus in addition to helping someone out. You're preventing someone from potentially getting sick. Look, this is a time. You know, you know. I'll say that. I'll say that. Yes. What? I'll kick it off at a hundred. Okay, Patrick's starting the bidding at one hundred. I will start the bidding at a hundred. So if anyone but, wants but, to bid me, but I it. let's let's say once again. Okay, first of all, you are going to get a framed original poster yeah. from Arliss. That has been in Robert Wall's personal collection. Yes, we have a hundred in the chat. Okay, two, two. I just want to sell this item a little bit. Okay, as the price goes up, someone has bid one hundred dollars and sixty-nine cents. So number one, it's an original poster, mint condition, from the personal wool archives. Number two, Bobby will sign the back of the poster. Sneaky. <laughs> You're not showing off. You can hang it up in your main room. You don't look it's like your little matter. secret. It's your it's little, little, it can be your little secret. Yes. Three, he will include a signed headshot. What do you do with that headshot? Do you frame it separately? Do you tape it over the face on the main poster? <laughs> do you put it in the corner? That's up to you, dealer's choice. Okay. But number four, every time you look at that poster hung up on your wall, you tell yourself that got someone out of jail. Truly, you look at that poster on your wall. You said that wasn't a frivolous purchase. That bought someone their freedom. By the way, and if you do buy it, uh, not only that, this is one of those posters where if you hang it on the wall, you know the eyes move. You know, yes, the eyes move. yes. It's, a <laughs> it's haunted poster. It's haunted. It's haunted. It's haunted. That's a big selling point. This poster is That's haunted. A big selling point. This poster is haunted. It's a haunted poster. Uh huh. I, I, you know, I don't care how many times I've seen that joke; it always cracks me up. Someone <laughs> is saying, someone is saying, please tell Robert to mail it rolled up, no frame. Oh, we got a hundred one. First of, all, how, first of all, how much is this advice bid? <laughs> this person has not bid a number. Okay, okay. Well, we'll take that under advice. Yeah, Kendall, if you want to bid, then then we'll talk. Yeah, well, I mean, I appreciate it. Yeah. 
But we appreciate it. We appreciate it. But right now we're just talking to bidders. That's yeah. right. Uh, Johnny Cochran just showed up, Robert. Johnny. Yeah. Yeah, Johnny. I mean, we were lucky. We got every, you know, people, you know, dug the show that, you know, uh, like I said, we were never in a hip show. But, I mean, people, you know, in if you were in sports, if you were, there was, it had a following, you know. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Uh, oh, oh, here we go. Someone is saying we should auction at the beginning of next week's episode because the people will have more money to contribute. Fair enough. We ain't taking them. Let me find one. In fact, well, I got to be on the beginning of next week. Okay, we could do that. The um, uh, Yeah, I guess we could do that. Yeah, sure. We can make yeah. it a thing. This is a good point because we can say from the beginning of the episode, okay, at the end, whoever has donated the single largest amount gets the poster. Yeah, we'll do that. You know what I'm saying? We I give an entire run to do that. I got to tell you, my wife would sell 150 pieces that I got around here that she'd like to get rid hey, of. Hey, hey. You know? That, uh, then I got, well, well, we'll figure it out. We'll see how many things yeah, we'll we'll figure, figure it out. I think that's a good idea. I don't idea. really need it. I'm, I've never been. Robert, well, well, I'm not a big, in that way. I mean, in all the autographs, yeah. I mean, Duke Turner would get autographs of all the athletes. All the the, the cup, cup, right? He would get the cup signed. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. Every yeah. Time. Um, I had one autograph the entire time I was there, and that was Jim Brown, uh, who I just watched in the Dirty Dozen. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and also great um, in Small Soldiers. It's true. Yeah, Jim, um, Jim Brown and I talk a lot. I'm sorry? Bobby, if you could, if you could, if we're going to be auctioning it off next week, yeah. uh, maybe, Bobby, you could take a couple of pictures of it and email them to Patrick. That'd be great. And so we can maybe make a it. nice... We can make a pitch video yes. so that people come in ready to go. Right. And that way, that way and we I, can I, really I sell it. The rules are very clearly laid out. It's like we, we're watching 12 episodes. By the end of those 12 episodes, the single biggest donation gets the post. Yeah. Yeah. I might find some other stuff too, though. So, hey. maybe, so we got four more seasons. Let me see what I got. I got so much. I got, you know, go shit. Through the you know, go through the archives. Hey, how about, hey, how about this one? Hold on. Oh, Ooh. wait, they're all playing season this four. This is genuinely, I know that, I know that right now there's no TV or film production, but right now this is good TV. <laughs> what is he coming back with? <laughs> what is he? He I, just said, I, I've got something and he's coming uh, back with it. I don't see it right here. Uh, oh, I, they made me like, oh my God. Oh, now it's like season one of Lost. One, an original Arliss Bobblehead. Arliss Bobblehead? Yeah, I don't know where it is. Uh, I will bid on that, Robert. Uh, I, I will bid on that. <laughs> I mean, how about this? For right now, right now, the next person, uh, let's give a number. And Robert, will you bobble your head for the for what's a good amount for that? <laughs> He's already giving, oh, it. giving it away. Don't give it away. Don't give it away. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. I'll take it back. Take it back. <laughs> take it back. All right. Whoever sends in the next bid for ten dollars will get a bobble from Robert right. now on camera. Boy. Pretty soon I'm going to be paying people. Uh, well, hey, no, I don't want to come on here. Patrick, yeah. what number are we up to right now? Uh, hang on. I imagine we're probably pretty close to the end just because we're done with the season. So I I'm, know, but that's why I'm like, what What can we get out of this? How can we? What we're at $3,470. We're $30 away? For for well we're for thirty forty five hundred. I mean we got we got to get to thirty five. No question. Yeah, yeah, we really should. We really should. Yeah. And thirty five. That's the best we've done for. That's in week three. That's a that's our best, yes. right? Yeah, you see, yeah. just like just like yeah. my series ratings went up. It's every year. tracking. Right. Absolutely. Tracking. We're building it. We're building it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what the hell? Um, this is not. I don't think this is it. I. I I don't think this is it. Bobby. <laughs> okay, we got $10 from Jordan Beard. So when Robert's back, okay. Forget <laughs> yeah. We're going to get a little bottle. Oh, this is we should all do it. We should I'm all wrong. do it. I'm wrong. Now, they used to have glasses on this, like mine, they fell off. But oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now you bobble at the same time, Bobby. Bobble, Bobby. Next week. Next week. Next yeah, week. that's great. Oh. That's good. Oh, that's great. Wait, 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 wait. You know what? 
This is 2002 after the seventh season. This was the going away party from the rap. Maybe we save this one for the big ending. I don't know. Yeah, I think, sure. I think that's season seven. I think that's, yeah. season, seven. I think that's, yeah. that's season seven. We don't that give that away in season four. four. No one's earned it yet. That's oh. a big game item. I'll find you. Oh. Hey, you know what I did get in the mail today, yesterday? I got yeah. from Amazon Germany. You know the Woody Allen movie they didn't release here in the States? You know, I, have ne- I don't know anything about this movie. Go you know on. They didn't release here in the States? Uh, yeah. uh, oh, Timothy Chalamet and Jay- Jude Law. They yeah. Were, wow. Well, they were, I saw somebody talk about it online. I got it from Amazon Germany last year. Wow. Yeah, so I'm going to watch that. It's like it's Robert, not- Robert, I'll say this. Robert. I'm going to be very delicate with how I talk about it. There's an actor in that named Griffin Newman who is a star. He's a star. He's very funny. And when you watch that movie, you will recognize him. I promise you that. Okay. I heard he's got a good scene. I promise you that. You will definitely recognize him. <laughs> what bizarre circumstances that would make it so that you could only buy that film from Germany? There's a I didn't even think to say. I, I, I had to, I, I finally got it. I checked to see if it was in England. It's German well, in England. We'll see. You'll, you'll like him. You could see a, a Timothy Sh- uh, you know, doing Woody Allen in German. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yes, that's a perfect combination. Did you well, have a good well, We will see. I'll look for it. I'll, I'll watch it this week, I'm sure. Good. Good. Yeah. Um, did we get to the number? Somebody bid 10 bucks, right? Yeah, somebody bid 10 bucks. So we got the we got the bobble. Got the bobble. Thank you. I uh, appreciate it. I'll see you next week. We'll figure it out. Yeah. And I appreciate it. Have a great week. Be safe. You're the and best. Thank you so Bobby. much, Bobby. It's been a joy okay. watching you. By the way, if you're going, if you're on your way, you, you see a bunch of people running in and out of shoe stores, and, and you get the urge, uh, nine and a half D. Okay. 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 Thank okay. you, Bobby. Okay. Let's throw it out there. Okay. Uh, Bobby. Bye-bye. Bobby. Bye, Bobby. Bye, Bobby. Bye, Bye Bobby. Bye, Bobby. Oh, bye, Bobby. Bye, bye, Bobby. Bye-bye, Bobby. Oh, guys, we did it. Oh, my. We did it, guys. We got the, the end of season three. Uh, and uh, and so next week we'll be back with season four. And uh, and at that and next week we will we will be at the ha- halfway through next week, we will be at the halfway point of the saga. We will. Well, no. Right? I mean, look, we're committed no. now to week eight doing 1600 pen. Yes, but that but the Arla saga but will be over when the we Arla saga, yes. Yes. I mean, we're, um, so I, half, we're probably already ha- over halfway done with the show. Maybe. I think Not this... They, was this the longest season? I think this is the longest season. I think like okay. halfway through... The- okay, let me pull it up. Our list, Wiki. Look at this. This is a good comment. Remember when you were worried about how much fun we'd have today? It was fun. We made Bobby Bobble, and we were watching, and we're watching 1600 Pen. I hope people enjoyed this. I, I will say this. Yeah. 12, 13, 10, 11. That's what we're looking, we're up against. We're up for 10, 12, 13, yeah. 10, 11. Yeah, maybe not then. Yeah. I will say this. So we'll, I am very proud of everyone who's watching. We raised a lot of money. Yes. A lot of money. Yes. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. It was really great. Um, how should we end the stream? How should we end the stream? Well, well, was there anything? We didn't raise enough money to watch the OC, right? No, we didn't. That was nine thousand something. It was nine thousand. Was the ice cream? Four thousand was Patrick with the feet. Yeah. Four 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 was deflating BB eight. Eight 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 was reflating BB eight. Yeah. Uh, uh, million was doing a new episode of Fizzy Boys. Hang on, we had more. Sixty nine sixty nine was the nose condom. Right. Twenty thousand. It was take the Ratzenberger out of the box, which like would have been. Yeah, no, we we eliminated that. It became the foot thing. Yeah. Eighty thousand. We watch all of Friends. Right. Hundred thousand. We watched the first episode of Oz five Sundays in a row. Uh, five hundred thousand. George gets tortured at the torture house. And that one's expired. That was the end of this expired. stream. Once the stream some, ends, if we don't some of these re- might half a million, that one's future weeks. That one's gone. Baby. Yeah. One million. That one's gone. Gethard, Gethard starts back up Fizzy Boys. I'll also say this. 
a lot of you donated a hundred dollars and didn't send me cameo requests. So if you want Watto cameos, we'll do them next week. Send them to me. But I'll say this: um, I, it's clear there's a, a an obvious way to end the episode. If you have something to say, George, to put a bow on it, yeah. I urge you to do so. But I think I know how this episode needs to end. Yep, I do. Too. Okay, I I have uh, two things to say. Uh, and I don't know because this will be lit differently than before. Oh boy, it's like night. Right, I want to see. Yeah, it's hard with night, so I gotta I gotta see if maybe this is the way to do it. If I light it's from like the front, sunset. It's a sunset. They they look good. They're glowing. George, I don't know if it's better to put it. Maybe put the light from below. We're also fifteen dollars away from thirty five hundred. So, okay, so much. Well, more. let's just even it out. Let's even it out. Let's get to thirty five. All right. You want to give me some music, uh, Watto? Yeah. Great. Any track you want from Star Wars? Okay. Ready, George? Tell me when you're ready. Ready. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.